It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots. Back for another week in studio, baby. Let's go. I don't know how to feel about COVID anymore. Why, why? I really don't. Nah, I'm just, you're I, over it, bro. No, Come I'm not on. Over don't it. put it back on. You were just talking with it off. No, but I have it though. I just want to make I just want everybody to know I do be masked up. You know what I'm you saying? You came in masked up. I'm just watching everybody. They back in their studios. Hopefully we'll be back in our studio uh with Breakfast Club really soon. Right. Clearly we're back in uh the studio for Brilliant Idiots. This shit is shaping up though, be honest. Nah, it's really nice. It's really nice. That's right. Shout out to Steel Sick, man. This dude uh, from Cleveland built this entire robot right here. For no reason. Well, no, I'm an official Charlotte Avenger. Yes. <laughs> that's how we look to people. <laughs> <laughs> that's, listen, that's how we look to people. We look like that's that. How we, that's how we, we look, look, bro. Like, we look oh. like big monstrous robots that are controlling things <laughs> behind the scenes and destroying people. Yes, that's how we look to people. I Yo, like we're that. intimidating over here, bro. But why did he make that though? Why? Like just because? I think that's his art, man. You know yeah, I mean? when you're that creative and you just got a bunch of spare parts, let me build a robot. Yeah, I think he goes out and gets the parts. That's dope. Yeah. What's his I, name? Uh, This is Mike. Mike. Mike from where? Man, from Steel Sick, man. Go go check out my man Mike, man. Let me get the Instagram perfectly right. But You said he's from Cleveland? Cleveland, dude. Hey, man, LeBron, you see how much time you gave people when you left? <laughs> people got mad time on their hands. They had a lot of shit to throw out. <laughs> <laughs> it's Steel Sick right here. Just go check it out on Instagram. He's got crazy shit, man. And he literally drove this over from Cleveland. He can make anything? Anything, dog. So if you got some stuff that you want me, I'm going to connect you. I'm going to hit you up, Steel Sick. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate you, man. All right. And let's that's, a, a, that's a ladder that's made by Latinos. <laughs> so what, Taylor? I'm sitting there looking at this shit like that shit is really something. <laughs> a sculpture or something. I didn't know. I was like, is it, it is a tall ass ladder, I guess. Now, let's start the show. Um, as always, we start off with Positively Brilliant, What a Fucking Idiot shows. What did you see this week that made you say Positively Brilliant oh. or What a Fucking Idiot? Oh, I got it. Talk to me. Uh, Cardi B, Positively Brilliant. Really? Bro, this has been the greatest like divorce setup I've ever seen in history. Explain. You know you're going to divorce your man, right? You could go <gasps> talk to... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yep. okay. Yep. I know where you're yeah. going. All right. <laughs> it just hit you. Didn't okay, it? okay. It just hit you. Gave people a little reminder beforehand. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. I got it. You gave people, you gave everybody a little reminder. Is this a little reminder of what's about to be on the market? That's okay, it. okay, okay. This is not divorced ass pussy. This is some wet ass <laughs> pussy, right? I got the wop, not the duh. That's what it is. I'm just saying, like, if you <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, I get sad when I see that shit though, man. What what? Divorces. D divorce makes you sad, but not if she's talking about hitting a dangly thing in her throat. I, I listen, I'm a married man. I don't know nothing about that. I feel sorry for offset. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I feel sorry for Cardi. You want marriages to work. You do. They're supposed to be till death do us part. That's true. And then, you know, when you see two people getting young and they have money, people mm. say automatically from the get go, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. This guy's not going to be faithful. She might not be faithful. They're right. both young and wild. And then when you see that it doesn't work, you're like, ah, oh, fuck, y'all proved everybody right. You proved everybody right. You're yeah. sad. And then yeah. you go through that. That grieving period mm -hmm. and then you also go but she's hitting a dangly thing in her throat bro. <laughs> no you and gotta that, be able to hit that what you have to be able to hit that well if it's a team effort then I think that <laughs> what if it's a team effort, right? Like I, you gotta have the length, and she gotta have the willpower. She gotta have the drive. She's got, and again, this is what she's saying. Yeah, yo, how embarrassing is that? If you pushing and you not hitting the dangly thing, you're like, oh, bruh. Listen, on the positively brilliant note, what if the setup is the wop, but you do the divorce just to scare the shit out the guy, because you don't want him. You don't want him to. You don't want him to know. You don't want him to think you're going out there to put that WAP on the street. So maybe now it's time for him to act right. So the WAP was a fear tactic. He put, she put that out there. So now it's in everybody's mind like, oh, shit. Right? Oh, my and God. And then now I'm filing the for divorce. Man. Yes, I'm filing for divorce. Now you scared this WAP going to hit the market. Mm. So now you might finally act right. 
If that's the problem, I don't know what the I don't know why they're getting a divorce. Nobody does. Everybody's speculating and all of this type of shit. I don't think it's fair to speculate because number one, black men don't cheat. Facts. So to even just throw that out there on offset is whack. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason that they are splitting apart, you know, I would be trying to act right. I don't want my 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 wife, the mother of my child out there with that wop back on the market. The wop back on the market. No, man, yeah. no, man, no, man, no. Especially not in that business. Now, because, because in that business, if she gets with another rapper, oh, we can't never be together again. Yeah. You know what I mean? What is the rule with that? Like, Oh. Yeah, what the is ru- the rule with the that? The rule with any woman. Okay. If you sleep with two guys in the same industry, you're a hoe. I that- didn't make these rules. Yeah. It just is what it is. It's like, you know what it is? It's proximity to each other. Yes. Right? Like, if you fuck two friends within the same group, even if you only fuck two people... You a hoe. You a hoe to that group. You, you fuck, fuck the whole group. If you fuck two people on a football team... You a hoe. You a hoe. I, and I'm not... And listen, I'm not saying I think that you're a hoe. I'm just saying that's the perception. That seems to be the rules. That's, if you have FedEx or Amazon and you popping that pussy for other brothers that work at FedEx or Amazon and you fuck two of them FedEx workers... Right. You a hoe at FedEx. That's true. I, but if you fuck one at USPS, one at FedEx, one at RDC... You're not a hoe at all. You're not a hoe at all unless they have some big delivery conference. <laughs> and, and then, then if they have a big delivery conference and they start discussing some of the WAP that they've received and over they the years. they all have similar stories. All of them got similar stories about you. Mm, mm. You just like packages delivered. You just like packages delivered. That's it. You a hoe that loves <laughs> You like that same day delivery. You H-O-D. <laughs> hoe on delivery. That's just what it is. We didn't make these rules, people. Yeah. I, I tell, yo, by the way, I tell all my homegirls that. Though. Uh-huh. You have to be aware of that. Now, is it the truth that you're a hoe? No. But that's the perception. That's the perception. You sleep with two rappers and that gets out there, people are going to label you, you a You know hoe. what it's like? It's like the bruised banana. Talk to me. Like, a bruised banana is still edible. Okay. Matter of fact, the more bruised it is, the better the banana bread it makes. Really? You don't think... Isn't that what they say? Like, in order to make banana bread, you have to use the super, super ripe bananas? Doesn't matter. This is brilliant. idiots. go with it. Okay. Point is, maybe a girl who's fucked a lot of dudes that all know each other that has that hoe perception, Mm -hmm. label, if you will, she might make the most delicious banana bread. She might be the best in bed. Oh, the woman that's got more experience. Especially with the team, because she knows what the team wants. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, and that's the other thing, She's too. talking to your homeboy before yeah. she's hooking up with him. She's yeah. like, oh, what is this guy like? Yeah. She's getting all the details. Yeah, It's like, yeah. you don't go get an engagement ring before finding out what the ring looks like, yeah. what your girl's ideal ring looks yes. like. Yes, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. And most women do have a type, though. That's the crazy part. What like, you mean? If, like, if you like ball players, like, if you fucked one ball player and that didn't work out, you're going to go probably fuck another ball player. Yo, that's the thing about fucking ball players, though. It's like, I'm, that's not a type. Like, why is ball player a type? It depends. If you're a basketball player, if you're 6'5". So that's you, know you like saying? tall guys. You lean. Not necessarily tall guys. You actually like the ball players. Because another thing ball players have is money. You're not just fucking the tall security guard at the club. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's fucking, <laughs> I feel like one of these girls, man. Wow. <laughs> I just fucking whopped all over my face. <laughs> Why'd you do that? I don't what know. Else? I was trying to drink and I got all excited. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Now That's I know wild. how comfortable it is, tall, girls. You're thinking about a tall basketball player and you just throw some shit in your face. <laughs> like he's just standing over you, just giving it all. Like, what the fuck, man? Taylor, have you ever been a hoe based off of our rules? No. You've never hooked up with guys that knew each other? Two guys that knew each other. Oh, yeah. But did you say that girls were to have a hoe? A whole phase you should go through your whole phase, but you know, you should determine your whole phase. Not the fact that you fuck two guys from Lower Marion that <laughs> live a block from each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, because then they go out there and they tell everybody you're a whole. Let me ask you you should this. determine your whole phase. Taylor, let me ask you this question. What? If there was a guy who fucked multiple girls within your girl group, would he be a hoe? Yes. Men okay. can be hoes too. Men so can be we're hoes. keeping the same energy. So girls got the same <laughs> definition. I'm not men, upset about it. Men can be hoes too, especially <laughs> in this era of COVID, because you know they be out here fucking with no condoms and no mask. Hold on, <laughs> I want to give somebody what a fucking idiot. I just want to remember their name real quick because this is so disrespectful, man. What is? There's it? so many articles, man. What? what, what, what? No, no, no. It's so I'm many. I'm gonna tell. As soon as I tell, it's all right. Uh, Brian Sazi. Okay. He's the editor 
at large for Yahoo Finance. Okay. He had this headline. See, if it's on my Instagram page, Alex. Oh, you got it? Oh, this is so disrespectful. And there's all of these articles about New York being dead. And, okay. You know. Oh, I saw you post that, this. Yeah, bro, this that's disrespectful. Come on, man. Look look at the headline. Can we see that? What's the headline? What's it? Uh, so turn it up. The headline says, "It's." I don't want to paraphrase it, but it's Kamala Harris may have made Timberlands, Timberlands cool, cool again. again. Wow. Senator Kamala Harris, vice presidential nominee, Brian Sazi yeah. from Yahoo, the editor at large at Yahoo, says that Senator Kamala Harris mm -hmm. may have made Timberlands cool again. How do you feel about that? I feel like, yo, it's a, it's very disrespectful to New York City, and I'm yeah. not even from New York. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, I am a Timberland connoisseur. I read the article. Brian said that... Um, she may make Timberlands as cool as they once were in the 90s. Uh, First of all, I hate culturally clueless people. Okay. And the reason I hate culturally clueless people is not even a race thing because I saw so many black people yesterday commenting on Senator Harris Timberlands and giving her like all this love. Yeah. Bro, those ain't the butters, bro. She has some trash Timberlands. Those the before. single soul. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know how like when a white person beatboxes, if it's like decent, people lose their mind? Yeah. They're treating man. her like a white kid, yes. bro. They really are. These ain't dude. these. Those ain't the six inch sweet premium joints. And you got the double, what is it? The double, the double uh, soul. The double soul. Like she kind of got single soul Tim's on, bro. Come on, come on. It's man. a little soft. I think Akash wore them in an episode of Flagrant. We have them in the <laughs> other room. They kind of look like egg rolls. And she wore them on. And, and listen, there was a whole. There was like a whole like photo op for it. Did you see the video? Yes. The video kind of scans down at the Timberland. First of all, she gets off the plane. Yes. And then there's that little rug there, which yes. is kind of racist. Why? I mean, she's Indian, but she's supposed to fly, you know. Jesus Christ. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's not a Latin, right. bro. Okay. <laughs> it's a little fucked up. Good point. It's like, <laughs> good, obs good observation of racism. I can, I can see. <laughs> How many things are they trying to hit so everybody's happy? Get it? Okay. They got the army jacket for like the, the army white army folks. For fatigue for the white army folks. The Tims for black, black people. people. The, the, the rug for Indians. I get it. I get it. Okay. I like, I, I get it. I get it. Our president. And then, then I mean... I don't know if you were privy to this, but I was not privy to this. Kamala is stacked, bruh. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean, dude? Like, mean? can I get a latte? A mocha? I'm lost. What is this? <laughs> you, you lost? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, my girl is... She got bar This is going day, over my bro. head. What are you, you, know, <laughs> you did not notice what I noticed? No, bro. I didn't. Oh, my goodness, bro. I was too busy focusing on the Timbs. Sick, i serious. And I'm not even mad at Senator Harris because it's not her fault. It's the people around her. And and Brian actually wrote in the article, he put mm -hmm. sneaker style Timberlands. Yeah. That's the problem, Brian. They're, they shouldn't be sneaker style. These are boots. There we go. Okay, six inch Premium wheat boots that they mm -hmm. say are for hiking. Nobody ever hikes in these. That's right. This ain't it, bro. Not at all. Akash wore these? Akash wore them to Why? an episode. I had roaches in there? <laughs> Why? Why did he do that? Why? Yo, you want to know how to wear Tim's if you're a politician? Yeah, yeah. Go look at AOC when she was on with Jesus and Meryl. She had some Tim's She's on? She's from the Bronx. Right. She know how to rock a pair of Timberlands. Right, right. You don't find that disrespectful that somebody can just literally say Hey, you Senator Harris made Tim's cool again. That just that's just erasure. It's just disregarding what people have done culturally to make Tim's cool, especially New Yorkers. Listen, this is how uh, white people feel every time Kanye makes some old white shit cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you want to continue with what a fucking idiot? Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> shall we? Is that a transition? I think what Kanye does is both positively brilliant and I just uh, thought you called him what Kanye. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think what Kanye does is both. Uh, <laughs> it does sound like it. <laughs> well, first of all, I will always think Kanye is positively brilliant just because there is nobody who stirs up waters to catch fish better. Oh, yeah. He, there is nobody who can make people care about absolutely nothing the way Kanye West does. And there's nobody who can pull on people's heartstrings mm. so effortlessly. Mm. He can pull on your heartstrings over here when you're upset with him because he's rocking with MAGA. He can pull on your heartstrings over here when you're siding with him because he's trying to free us he's from modern champion. day slavery. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is so disrespectful. I am so tired of people comparing choices they make 
to actual slavery. Okay, now break that down. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe we go. Maybe we start first with like the fact that there are oppressive and exploitive contracts that are signed. He's right about that. Right. But and, well, listen to what you said. Yeah, yeah. You said that are signed. Now, what we could say is mm -hmm. there are oppressive and exploitive contracts. Yes, we know this. Yep. I'm 42 years old. Since I've been alive, I've been hearing about these shit. Right, right. Why the fuck are you still signing them? And I think that's the important distinction because you would probably say if you're a record label and you're signing some 13-year-old kid mm -hmm. to one of these contracts, this kid don't have a lawyer. The record label's probably providing the lawyer. Exactly. If you need a lawyer, we'll provide one for you, that type of shit. Absolutely. That's 100%. fucked up. 100%. But if you are a 42-year-old man... Who's been in the industry for a long time. Who's a multi-millionaire. Who hasn't just signed one contract. Who, you, has, who has re-upped quite a few times at this same record label. And if you keep re-upping and not negotiating maybe the rights to buy out your masters or not negotiating the rights to your future music in your deal, you kind of only got to be mad at you. Absolutely. And I always say smart people learn from their own mistakes. Wise people learn from the mistakes of others. Right. Even though we have seen so many examples of people getting absolutely got in this motherfucking music industry, mm. we've also seen a lot of examples of people who have actually done it right. Mm. LL Cool J owns his masters. Mm -hmm. Rihanna owns her masters. Jay-Z owns his masters. Mm -hmm. Stevie Wonder owns his masters. Metallica owns their masters. U2 owns their masters. Why not talk to the people who've done it about how to do it. Michael Jackson owned the oh Beatles my God. masters. Yo, we, he didn't just yo, own his shit, I'm right? I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah, go. Because I promise you, man, that is a story that needs to be told. Um, <laughs> it's actually a story I would love to assist in telling. I love Prince, and we talk about Prince often. Prince raged war against the machine, as he should have, because, you know, he was in a bad situation. But for every Prince, there is a Michael Jackson. We don't talk about the story of Michael Jackson enough because y'all busy too too busy speculating on whether or not he was goddamn playing fucking naked pity pat mm -hmm. with little boys. Is that a game? Yeah. Pity pat? What the fuck is pity pat? I didn't know it was a game, so I was like, did you just add nudity to it? a card game? It? What's oh, the okay. shit with your hands? I thought that's what it was called, pity pat. No, Numbers the, is one of the... Uh, like Taylor is boogers, that type of shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Numbers is the one that we played. No, the shit where you slap your hands. No, Miss Mary, Me, Mac, 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 Mac. Oh, just oh, in black, 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 I should have just said y'all so busy hey. worried about Michael Jackson playing goddamn naked games with little kids. But That's what it is. That's yeah. what it is. That's yeah. all I'm essentially saying. Michael Jackson is the person who sat down, uh -huh. had a conversation with Paul McCartney. You know what Paul McCartney did? <laughs> Paul McCartney put him onto the business of publishing right. and owning catalog. Right. And Paul McCartney talked about how he got finessed in a situation because it doesn't just happen to black people. It happens to white people in this music business too. Right. He got finessed out of the Beatles catalog. He talked to Michael about how one day he wanted to buy back the Beatles catalog. He planted that seed in Michael's <laughs> what head. What did Michael do? Michael got that motherfucking money <laughs> with Thriller and <laughs> instructed his attorney to go buy the goddamn Beatles catalog. Let's go. He, Let's when, go. When, when he bought the Beatles catalog for like 40 plus million dollars, I forgot exactly what the number was. Right. He bought it for 40 plus million dollars. And he bought it from the company's uh, ATV. So he ended up owning half of ATV. Right. Sony eventually... If I'm not mistaken, I could be telling this story wrong, buys ATV. So now Sony and ATV are 50-50 partners. Fucking Michael Jackson ends up being 50% owner of damn near all the publishing in the music industry. <laughs> Think Michael, whenever you see Sony ATV, yeah. that is Michael fucking Jackson is the ATV part. Uh. Michael Jackson owned Eminem and... I think Beyonce for a moment, like he yeah, owned, yeah, I mean, yeah. you can Google how, who, who, who he all had under the publishing company. Right. But my point is, that is a story of somebody who did it right. Right. That is a, some, that is a story of somebody who figured it out. Now, let me ask you this question. Uh, to the people out there who go, well, you shouldn't be able to own someone else's songs. How do you feel about that? Well, in the case of somebody like Michael Jackson, I, one, another reason I don't think Michael gets enough credit, Michael owned the publishing and then gave it back. He gave Little Richard his publishing back. You know what I mean? It was somebody else, too. It was somebody else well-known. I, 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 I want to say Ron Isley, but don't, I, that's probably totally wrong. But I definitely know he gave Little Richard his publishing back. Mm. And that's what you should do. See, the problem is a lot of these brothers, they get in these positions, right, of power, and they 
adopt the same exploitive tactics okay. of the white man that they fighting against or the record industry person record that they industry. fighting against yeah, yeah. or the TV producer owner that they're fighting against. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I saw somebody post today. I forgot the young brother's name, but he posted, damn, he retweeted Kanye talking about how everybody should get their publishing back. He was like, shit, you offered me 35000 for all my publishing. And then he tweeted, I was mad excited to sign with Kanye until I saw that goddamn offer. But guess what that young man didn't do? He didn't sign the fucking contract because he wasn't caught up in the hype right. and he wasn't caught up in that $35,000. A lot of these brothers, they take the fucking bag. Yeah, yeah. Because they want the perception of power as opposed to actually having power. Yeah. And it takes patience to get to that real power. Yes. And now... You just on Twitter motherfucking complaining. Now, do you think it's possible that he is abundantly aware of the importance of owning your masters and has probably had these conversations with these record labels before and he's just doing this as a publicity stunt to get some attention for something? No, I don't think it's a publicity stunt. I think that Kanye is not getting what he wants um, because, you know, I mean, I, and once again, this is just me talking. Yeah. Uh, I was told Kanye just resigned, uh, resigned recently. Okay. You know what I mean? I was in the process of resigning. Um, and I think that's probably what he wanted in his negotiations. You and know they're what I mean? Or, or even if, and I'm sure if he, they don't want to give it to him. He wants to buy him back. Right. But they won't necessarily sell him. And the reason they yeah. probably won't sell him is because if you look at some of the contracts, if you look at the, the pages of the contract that Kanye posted, mm -hmm. Kanye still owes the label mad money. How else can they fucking recoup? Like, right. they still recouping. Now, here's my thing. Yo, pay the label back everything that you owe them. Yeah. Buy your masters. Keep it moving. Sadly, that's how business works. Nobody's going to give you anything in this business, right. people. Right, Like, there's no such thing as fair. Right, right, <laughs> you right. You get what you deserve. You don't get what you deserve. You get what you, you, get what you negotiate. Yeah, you yeah. Knew what it. You knew what it was. If you don't want to deal with that, then don't sign. Right. Ever. Seriously, right, right, don't right. sign ever if you don't ever want to deal with that. Now, is it possible some people might say, yeah, but there was there was terms put into these contracts so you never can fully recoup. And that's, sup and that's super fucked up because then the label can say, hey, we can't give you the masters until you pay it back. Yet they have a system set up where you never exactly pay it back. Well, Kanye's a billionaire. So negotiate a good price. You're a billionaire. You can, you, you can afford to pay. Right. Right. You can afford right. to pay whatever it is you owe. So, and you can afford to buy your masters back. So that's why these discussions are tough because like everybody agrees there's exploitive contracts. Absolutely. And the people complaining about these contracts like Kanye have signed people to exploitive contracts. Like, Absolutely. Is he giving everybody that, wor that works for like good music back their masters? That's what we need to see. Let's open up the hood of good music. Let's do it. Let's see what Big Sean's deal looks like. We Let's talk, see what Tiana Taylor's deal looks we like. We always hear about uh, what's the guy's name who did I'm Loving It. What's his name? Pusha T. Pusha T. Hmm? The McDonald's jingle? Yeah. Oh. He, oh, he he's the guy I don't who know wrote that's that. True. He really did that? I heard yeah. it. Yeah, and he did the Arby's one, too. We're making I sense. heard it, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't sure. believe this. Anyway, allegedly, that's yeah. what it is. That he owns like 50% of it, something like that. It's like, we hear about him owning the jingles, but does he own his songs under good music? And I don't if know. he does, God bless. But I guess the point is like, there can be exploitive terms that we should try to like get rid of or mm -hmm. give artists the ability to like, I don't know, um, get buy back their music, negotiate back their music or something. But at the same time, we can hold adults accountable. You got to hold adults accountable for the contracts they sign. Like you yeah. said earlier, man, if you a young kid from the hood, you don't know no better, you fresh out right. and they take advantage of you, I totally feel your pain. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Even though you too should be paying attention to what everybody has been saying for years. Sure. But you're right? a kid. You don't know. You're a you're kid. You don't know no better. You're yeah. excited. But when you are a grown individual who constantly re-ups who constantly renegotiates and you take this these big bags of money for various albums. Like you might get 12. I think I was reading the contract that he posted. I think he got 12 million for like Yeezus and like three for this album, three for that album. You know what you're negotiating. I mean, didn't he negotiate a piece of Adidas? Yeah. So if you know how to get a piece of ownership when it comes to your clothing brand and the clothing brand that owns it, why can't you do that with your music? Absolutely. And um, see, the thing that Kanye is doing right now, that is scary for the record labels, right? Like, the record label isn't going to buckle right now. And the reason not, they're not going to buckle, because if they buckle to Kanye, 
then they're going to have to buckle to a lot of other people under the universal umbrella. Mm. Because well, it, don't act like a guy like Drake or Cash Money. Don't act like they, they don't, don't have the shit. money. And they buy back their masters at some point. Drake is definitely on his way to being a billionaire. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You think he's not going to come back and want to purchase his masters? Do you, you know think, what I mean? Do you think it's possible that uh, this is a problem that won't really persist in the future as so many young artists go independent now? Absolutely, 100%. And, and it's not going to persist in the future because Kanye is going to eventually end up, they'll probably give him like two of his masters back, right? They'll give him like, they might give him the album that means the most to him, which I would think is his first album. Right. Right? And then an album that everybody says is his best album, which probably, what would you say? Dark Twisted Fantasy. My Dark Twisted Fantasy, right? Right. So they'll probably give him those two. Yeah. He'll probably, he'll probably let him buy those two and he'll probably be cool for a second. Right. And be quiet. And then you'll all know that this wasn't about Everybody. It was just about Kanye. It was just about yay. You know what I mean? Don't you hate that when like, I hate people it. when people really just care about like their own success? It's the worst form of appropriation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Break that down. It's like I'm just saying it's the worst form of appropriation because you're appropriating somebody's struggle. And so you're using real struggles that exist like oppression to get support and for you. To get support for you and your rich problems. And your oftentimes, rich people's problems. You're not really kicking that back to those people whose struggle you're appropriating. Listen. If you really cared, you would simply treat people the way you want to be treated from the gate. Right. Now, I'm sure this isn't a new conversation for Kanye. It's not like an artist hasn't come to him and said, yo, can I get that shit? Exactly. Out of so yeah, being yeah. that, so being that this isn't a new conversation for you, there should never be anybody saying you offered them a bad contract. Like that young man on Twitter was this morning. I can't right. remember his name right now. Like I've never even heard of him, but he got a verified check. But yeah. He's a rapper. He said that Kanye offered him a bad deal. And I would love to know how everybody else at Good Music's deal looks. And- yeah. You can't if you're actively trying to sell good music, right? Right to Def Jam or Universal, whoever it is. If you're trying to sell your label off, mm -hmm. why would you be selling your label off to the same oppressive system uh, that you're trying to get out of? Uh, this shit is just weird to me, and you know what I mean. But I, listen, and that's that's the problem when you use selective honesty, yeah, to disarm people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it looks like Kanye's yeah. letting us in on this deep, dark music industry secret. And what yeah. he's saying is true because these contracts are oppressive. But let's go a couple more layers under Kanye uh -huh. and see why you're really having this conversation. You're right. having this conversation because you can't get what you want. Exactly. But you're 42 years old. You've put out a lot of albums. You've renegotiated a lot of different times. Yeah. You've had a lot of leverage for a long time, Kanye. Is this like a you could have gotten this yeah. before? Is this like a classic like narcissism tactic where you think the thing that you're doing that's only self serving uh, is actually for the greater good, and you kind of like position it as if it's for the greater good when in reality it's only about self? Yeah, well, I think that's where the um, I think that's where the narcissism starts the narcissist starts to manipulate people mm. because the more people you get riled up behind a cause which is essentially really your cause it just, just so happens to be related to the thing you want it scares the fuck out of those record industry people yeah, because like yeah, i said yeah. before the one thing universal doesn't want yeah. is everybody that can actually get their masters back yeah. standing up asking for their masters. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, 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 yes. And so that's what Kanye's doing right now. He's riling everybody up. Some Now I'm sure that some of these guys are choosing to play a different game. I'm sure a guy like Drake is just sitting back like, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to stack this money up. Who knows what he has negotiated. And one day I'm just going to buy my shit back. And you that's going to be a precedent. The yeah. way Hove did. Right. You know? you know what I mean? So some, some other people, they complain. Kanye complains. And I think that sometimes when you complain, the way Kanye does, all you're showing people is that you don't have any control over the situation. Mm. And I don't ever want to look like I don't have any control over the situation. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I always want to maintain control over the situation. What? Who has the right to a song? What do you mean? So like... The person who writes it and produces it. Okay. Yes. But sometimes the, the writer is different than the producer. Is different than the person that sings. Is different than the person that plays guitar. The person that plays drums. Like a, a song that's written for Beyonce, it might take twenty people to make a song like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. there's no doubt that Beyonce is the one that makes it a hit, right? Not only with her fame, but with her talent, with her fan base, etc. Right? But is that Beyonce's song 
just because she sings it, even if she didn't, we're assuming she didn't write the song and that a whole cornucopia of musicians put it together. Like, who gets to truly say, that's mine? I think Beyonce should get the biggest portion because she's Beyonce, so she has the leverage. Of, it makes sense. If you're a superstar writer, then maybe y'all will share publishing. You know what I mean? Like, but if does you, DJ Khaled own, is he the guy who owns his songs, even though he doesn't do anything no besides idea. assemble them? I guess, I guess that's what I'm saying. People are like, I want to own my masters. I want to own my masters. But what if there are people out there like, like, what if Pharrell's like, yo, I produced your whole album. Like, those songs are mine. Like, I, you just sang on them. You just rapped on them. But I made them. I mean, maybe they should be ours. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, what if nobody owns the master? Mm -hmm. And what if the way it's done is you can buy your percentage? Like, if you or Beyonce, maybe you're responsible for 80% of that song. It may be that way. I'm not a music industry junkie. I'm never going to be the person that sits up here and act like I know everything that's going on in music. Right, right. It could be that way. I don't know. I'm just saying there's a lot of people who make a song hot. And yes. especially if it's yes. earlier in your career before mm -hmm. anybody knows you. Kanye's in this unique position where, like, he actually is the guy who can produce the song. He can write the song. He can record the song. He can master it. So you're almost like... All right, fam, like maybe you do deserve the majority of your publishing because you can do all the work for it. But I'm sure there's artists like just some random fucking pop star. Yeah, it is a lot of people who have publishing on records, though. It, it, I had to clear I had to clear uh, Black of the Berry, you know, to use for the promo for the Black Effect. Right. And boy, by the, by the way, my how times have changed. I Because back in the day. I mean, maybe because I was just doing radio in a smaller market where you could just take a song and put it as an instrumental for a commercial. And it didn't matter. And nobody would give a shit. Yeah. If it wasn't on TV <laughs> yeah. or anything like that, yeah. now yeah. you have to clear these things and yeah. tell them yeah. what it's for. Well, yeah. it's, for just, it's for digital distribution. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, But it was a lot of people that had to clear that record. Number yeah. one was Top Dog. Which oh, I really? Was, yeah, which I was ex extremely happy to hear. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like top, salute to top, salute to punch. Like they had to, yeah. It, once it came from them, then it just trickled down to everybody else. But it literally was like this composer and that composer and this sample that. Like it literally is. Everybody does eat off right. it. You know what I mean? When yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. got to get those records clear because we, you know, we had to pay for that. So that everybody does eat off of that. Yeah. So that's a that's a good thing. So maybe it does break down the way you just described when it comes to percentages and all that. I don't know the intricate details. No. All I know in the most simple, yeah. layman terms, you don't have to sign this shit. Yeah. I don't know how many times I got to tell y'all that. You don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. Yeah. This, you talk about slavery being a choice. You made a choice. Yeah. <laughs> you made a choice. Where's yeah. this ship going? <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way, it's actually one of the stupidest choices to make. Because we have seen so many stories of people getting screwed. Yeah. We've seen modern day stories, past stories. Yeah, yeah, We've yeah. seen so many stories of people getting got. So the best advice I can give any artist out there, listen to the people that have done it tell you how to do it. I named y'all people who actually have their masters. Mm. LL Cool J has his masters. Mm. Rihanna has her masters. Jay-Z has his masters. Listen to them. Stevie yeah. Wonder has his masters. Go go read up on the story of Michael Jackson and saw how he ended up, you know, getting the Beatles catalog and owning all, owning all this publishing, right? Yeah, like, yeah. go 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 find out those stories. Go study somebody like Chance. Chance is the guy who owns his masters now. Right. Because no. he chose not to sign whatever was being put in front of him. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those are the people to study. What were you saying now? With Michael Jackson. So he bought it for $41 million in... 1985, and then they bought his 50% stake for 750 million. Low balled the fuck out of him. For, in 2016. But he was dead, though. Yeah, he was dead already. He was but, dead, so that's like so the, the estate. estate sold it for 750 million. And just so, so and people- And the Beatles catalog alone is worth over a billion dollars. That right there is just straight up robbery. Now, by the way, y'all yeah. want to talk about motherfucking smear campaigns, and y'all want to talk about people who absolutely folks had every reason to try to ruin? Right. Michael, goddamn, talk James. to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's obvious he owned half of the publishing of the music industry. That's so, too much power for one black person to have, and he's giving people's publishing back to them. Mm. If there's anybody who got it, that's it's, him. Come on, man. All this, and all. By the way, they've been trying to get Michael out the paint since the fucking nineties, right? Really? Like, when did all those allegations and shit start? I don't know. They've been. It seemed like they've been going on for as long as 
I've been alive, but yeah. definitely around that 90s era, era is when all of that shit really started happening. Mm. He started to really have all of those problems. And that's just because he was really fucking up status quo. Mm. We cannot have these goddamn artists thinking that they can just go on, uh, be going out here and buying back their publishing. I don't think people realize how much money it costs to use a song. A lot. Do you, will you say how much it costs? I don't even know the exact number. They Bro, didn't even tell you. All they said to me was thousands. Dog, I, I was I looking said, up. Well, handle it, partners. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like that's your fifty percent. <laughs> but I like to learn. No, of course. Mm -hmm. I, so for my for my special, I was looking at like songs that I would come out to, and I was coming out to this Michael Bublé song for a little bit, right? Michael Bublé's Blaze. What Michael Bublé. Can you was, sing it without them charging you? Uh, birds flying high. You know how I feel. Hey. Now it's actually a Nina Simone song. Really? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's called uh Feeling Good. Yeah. And Michael Bublé covered it. I wanted to use this Michael Bublé version, right? They were saying for the song $150,000. That is just to walk out to it? To, to, to for it to play and put Did they ask you how much you wanted to things. use? That's right. You can do different parts. You can do just the chorus yeah. or just the beginning. Yeah, and there's yeah, different yeah. things. But if it was the song, it was going to be $150,000. Now, granted, I understand they're doing this like one fee so you could use it and like resell it and put it on all these different networks and all that stuff, et cetera. But think about that. $150,000. You chop that up a bunch of ways. That's a lot of fucking money, bro. You hear a song in a commercial? Yes. $150,000. Yes. Like this is huge money. Yes. So when you make the hit and you're like, yo, I'm going to make millions touring, I'm going to make millions selling albums, these record execs are going, bruh, we going to make millions selling it Man, to Kia. Y'all ain't even pay attention. First of all, the, 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 the Positively Brilliant, the verses with Gladys Knight and Patti LaBelle. My God, that was such a vibe. And it was such a vibe because I loved seeing all of these different generations coming together to watch it. Like my sister uh, and my cousin, right. they had my mom and my aunt on Zoom watching it via, <laughs> via uh, Instagram. But y'all didn't notice Gladys Knight didn't play a lot of her huge records. Y'all ain't play? here. I heard it through the grapevine. Yeah. Reason she probably didn't play it is she probably don't own it. She probably couldn't clear it. To play it on that platform oh, probably shit. would cost a whole bunch of fucking money. That's what I was thinking. I mean, I don't know this for sure. I'm just assuming. I'm like, why wouldn't Gladys play I Heard It Through the Grapevine? That's probably the reason why. She probably didn't. She probably don't mm -hmm. own the record. She probably don't own the rights to the record. Even somebody, I think I read, uh, I think Artemis Gordon, who I love. Y'all should follow Artemis Gordon. I think Artemis Gordon even said that um, at certain points, they were playing different interpre interpretations of her records. Because you can't play the exact one. Yes. That's what I, that's what I mean. I don't, I don't, I, I, I didn't notice because, you know, I'm not, I love Gladys Knight and I love Patty and it brings you back to a time when your dad and your mom was just riding around, you hear this music in the house, but I'm not, I wasn't super up on their catalogs mm -hmm. to be able to tell what the difference was. But I saw Artemis say that and I believe it, but I, uh, I heard it through the grapevine definitely was one that made me like, why didn't they play I heard it through the grapevine? Yo, you know how much money I heard it through the grapevine probably makes when it plays? Do y'all remember the California fucking raisins, bro? Yo, Somebody that, made millions off them yeah, fucking just yeah. licensing that song yeah. to those commercials, bro. Yeah. I promise you. I promise you. So, yes, there's a lot of money in that shit. What else did you see um, this week that made you say positively brilliant? What a fucking idiot. What a fucking idiot had to be the Clippers. Woo I mean, like, unbelievable. You think they curse for real, bro? I don't know if it's cursed, dude. Like, I, I really don't know if it's cursed. I think it's like... What do you mean cursed? They can't get past the fucking second round of the playoffs. Like yeah. something is wrong. Yeah. Is it Donald Sterling? Maybe. The ghost of Donald even, Sterling. Even though he's not the owner anymore, maybe the basketball gods don't even want him to be remotely happy. Because when you've been attached to something for so long, even when they win, you're going to cheer. You could act like you built it. You, it, you're, it you that's still your baby. Like you still Mark, got to Mark, see. Yeah. You still got to see your baby win a championship. The basketball gods are like, nope. Until he passes away, we're not going to shine <laughs> any light on this franchise. Now, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. They're like a year away from free agency. Well, Paul George could go now. He can go now. But I'm saying all that to say. Maybe one of y'all need to call up Donald Sterling and see how much he loves the Clippers, man. 
Ooh. He's 86, but he might have a few years left. Y'all don't I mean, know if y'all got a few years of Kawhi and Paul left. Call up down on the, just ask him like, hey, man, you know. You know what the term 86 means. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, now's the time to go, I'm just Donald. saying, I, you know, Donald, I heard, you know, kind of popping in wherever you're going. <laughs> both of them are lit right now. I'm tr trust me, heaven and hell are both popping Yo, they're right packed. now. It's all about it's all about temperature for you. What's the cl <laughs> what climate you like? You're a California boy, ain't you? Yeah, you good, you good. Good, I didn't get a nice tan. All I'm simply saying is I don't think the basketball guys are gonna shine any light on the Clippers until mm. Donald Sterling passes away. But Paul George definitely can go now. Who do you think gets the blame? Everybody. Collective effort. Doc Doc, Doc Rivers, the head coach. You kind of got to give it to Doc, right? Kawhi Leonard. You know, you got to show up. You know what I'm saying? I love Kawhi. He's a cancer like me. We got the same bond there. I feel like I understand him, but he gotta, you got to show up. Yeah. Um, and by the way, this was, this was the year, and I didn't even think about this until um, I, I, I actually read this. I forgot who I read it. I read it somewhere, but this was the year for Kawhi to prove that he's really a legitimate number one. Yeah. I well, didn't. I never Raptors. thought about it. Nah, Raptors. I thought so, but the Raptors made it all the way to the second round. The Raptors were good this year. Raptors made it to game seven, too. That's like, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. shows Kawhi had a great squad around him in Toronto. I, to me, what it shows is uh, Kawhi doesn't need to do any leading of a team when he's got a great organization. Like under Pop and the Spurs, yeah, yeah. everybody falls in line. With the Raptors, amazing organization. He was everybody the fourth option in in, this, with San Antonio, too, though. Of, very, in the beginning, but then eventually he became the alpha, like yeah, when they were yeah, playing yeah, Golden State, yeah. right? And he busted the ankle, like he was busting mm -hmm. ass. But what's interesting is he goes to the Clippers where he actually needs to keep people in line. Like, you need to keep Patrick Beverly in line. You need to stop Lou Williams from going to a strip club and leaving a bubble. Like, like guys, these, these those are not players that you want to be in a game seven with. Yeah, that nonverbal shit don't work. It don't work. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if Doc yeah. isn't doing his job, which is literally organizing and making sure everybody's committed and they can thug out a game seven, then you got to step up if you're the leader. You got He's just nonverbal. So I, I think you got to put that on him. Paul George, bro, it breaks my heart, man. This man, guy Steve, don't got it. Stephen A. Smith said Paul George is running the risk of being Dwight Howard. Let me tell you something. I don't ever want to be that verb, bro. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> like, and then and then Stephen comes. I love how Stephen A. Smith was shit on you, but then come back and be like, "But I love the exceptional job that Dwight Howard is doing now, just, uh, as, a role, just as a role player." You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But the way he explained it was true. Dwight Howard was in a system that was great for Dwight Howard that made Dwight Howard an All Star. Orlando, they went to the finals in Orlando, yeah, yeah. and then after that, he became sort of a journeyman. He never was the same right. since. He said Paul George mm -hmm. is running the risk of being that because in Indiana there was a system that made him look amazing. Yeah, that shit right there would fuck with me, bro. Yeah. Like, it would definitely fuck with me. But guess what? There's nothing wrong with being a part of a system. If the system works for you... Golden State is a system. Golden State is a system. I mean, there's a lot of different systems that worked. So, by the way, systems are the only thing that does work. The Patriots are a system. <laughs> you need a system. That's the problem with the Clippers. Yeah, that's they the problem a with system. That's the problem with the oppression. <laughs> what? It's a system. It's a system. It's a system. Okay. You have to have a system. That's what y'all need the, to do the, is break the down the system. The lack of system is what causes the Clippers to lose in game seven. Mm. There's no system. By the way, the Clippers ain't had a system all year. What's this system? Kawhi, do it. People act like, you know, oh, they got a great defense, but is it a, is it a, a defensive system or do they have individual great defensive players nah. like Patrick Beverly, Kawhi Raptors, Leonard? Raptors, fire system. Great system. Right? You could literally have a team that doesn't have a star, Kyle Lowry, but outside of that, you're not looking at some Pascal Siakam. Like, on his way to be on, on his way, but yeah. he bummed it up in the playoffs. Like, But the Raptors have such a strong system, such a strong culture, and such strong coaching, yeah. and Kyle Lowry is underrated that yeah. They could be effective in the playoffs against the Celtics. Game seven. Could have won that game. Could have won the game. Yeah. The Clippers ain't the Clippers. They the scissors. And if they are the Clippers, <laughs> if they are the Clippers, they're the Clippers that motherfuckers been using at home during this pandemic. You know what I'm saying? They ain't not the shit people use in a goddamn barbershop. Okay? <laughs> That's all. That's all. What else? Was what that your idiot? was that your uh what a fucking idiot or I don't know. I'm no, just, you did what a fucking idiot. You didn't do positive, he's brilliant. I'm just in here winging it. I love this studio. You feel like you like it, right? I do, man. Fire, I like the dog. energy in the studio, it's man. It's, it's a, different. I'm so sick of fucking Zoom. Yes. I hate it. I can't yeah. stand it. I hate doing the Breakfast Club on Zoom. I hate doing interviews on Zoom. I'm missing all of these great moments because they got to be virtual now. Like, we're going in the Radio Hall of Fame this year. Virtually? Yeah, uh, man. It's like, yo, get a big enough space. It's only like 
10 people getting in. Yeah. Everybody bring a guest and let's just socially distance and have an actual fucking event. Why can't you do that? I don't know why they're not doing that. Why don't you, know you do what I mean? it outside? Do it outside? I don't fucking know. It's going to be, it, it could be in LA. I had another award that I was getting this year that I was looking forward to. <laughs> that's, that's, why not you had, that's, that's why you hit Corona. You're like, I can't get my awards. You're goddamn right. <laughs> but unlike these narcissists out here, I'm telling you it's about me. <laughs> okay? I'm not trying to make it seem like I give a fuck about everything else. Okay? What is this? What's that, Taylor? Oh, this ads? All I'm simply saying is, yes, I am sick of Zoom. I want to experience some of this dope shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's no memories being made virtually. Like, I mean, even regular simple shit that you look forward to, like, talking to advertisers. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Like, yeah. I would rather be doing that on a stage in front of the room. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I try to write fire speeches. <laughs> <laughs> this shit don't hit over Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, let's, but oh, you also like the... I think you like the tension. I think you thrive off the tension. It's magic. Yeah. That's it's why an energy. I, I've noticed even like early in the in our days when we were at like MTV and you were like, yeah, I just want to do the show live. We were talking about, it was your show. Mm -hmm. It was on Common Sense. You're like, yeah, I want to do it live. And I'm like, why? And you're like, well, because then you don't like, you you actually show Not up. Not overthinking it. Yeah. You, you show up. You, you in the game. You in the game. It is what it is. You in the and game. I was like, oh, that's a good point. Like, because I never understood it. My my whole thinking was like, if it ain't stand up, why the fuck are we doing a live? Nah, man. But there is nah. a different energy, it's, especially yes. with the guests. People are a little Oof. bit more nervous. Yeah. And with people a little bit more nervous, you could break the tension with a it's, joke better. It's live yeah. TV, man. Yeah, and everything's yeah, yeah. so spurred a moment. And it's yeah, just like, yeah. yo, whatever you think your game plan is, it ain't gonna work. Yeah. It ain't gonna work. You gotta audible. You gotta, you gotta audible. Be able to audible. You gotta yeah. be willing to do it. That's why I love radio. I love. Yo, let's go. Turn the mics on. Let's but just Zoom go. it don't have it, bro. Nah, like, yeah, nah, it ain't the same. It ain't the same. And then, you know, sometimes you might say something on Zoom. They don't hear it. They don't hear it. Now you got to say it's, it again. The moment has gone. Yeah. Nothing worse than repeating a joke. Nah. Fuck that. Fuck that. All right. Let's pay some bills. Let's do it. Um, Cushy Dreams CBD. Oh, man. Salute to Cushy Dreams. Cushy Dreams offers a full lineup of premium smokable CBD. They specialize in extraordinary CBD rich hemp flower, a.k.a. bud, and pre-roll CBD joints, okay? It looks like high-quality marijuana, feels like high-quality marijuana, and tastes like high-quality marijuana, but it's CBD, okay? Cushy is 100% hand trimmed, never machine trimmed. Each batch is slow cured for two to four weeks to guarantee maximum freshness, freshness and preserve flavors and cannabinoids. Okay, best of all, it's grown right here in America. Now, um, I fuck with the CBD to go to sleep, bro. I like those pre-rolled CBD um, anxiety relievers that you can smoke in the motherfucking crib. Lord have mercy. Um, and Cushy Dreams has these things for specific effects, okay? So if you want to enjoy all the health benefits of CBD without getting high, because it only has, it has under 0.3% of THC, it's cannabis that ships directly to you and it's legal in all 50 states. Join the men and women who are sick of vapes and gummies and want to smoke their CBD. Now, the only reason I like smoking because it feels cooler. Right. I love the gummies too, but when you home on a Saturday nah, night- Nah, you just hit it, bro. Blow some O's. That's it. It just feels good to- Yeah. Blow the smoke back, you know what I'm saying? Go to CushyDreams.com to get some high-quality CBD bud. At checkout, use promo code IDIOTS for 20% off your next order. That's Cushy, K-U-S-H-Y, Dreams.com, promo code IDIOTS for 20% off your next order. Cushy Dreams, smoke your CBD. This episode is also brought to you by uh, having all your fucking hair, okay? What? That's right. Having all your hair. You need to make sure you got your hair. Charlotte, keep the hoodie on for this ad. I have a full head. Why? Because I've been fucking with the same active ingredient that's in hems for the last decade. And I'm telling you, my shit's not going anywhere. Matter of fact, I had some grow back. The only thing that dictates how well a man ages is a full head of hair. I'm telling you this as a white guy who does not age super well. But uh, we're doing our best. And you can do this yourself if you go to forhims.com. It's that simple. They're going to set you up with a program that's going to have you with luscious locks for the rest of your days. Very simple. Go to forhims.com. You can get a free, free visit. Forhims.com slash idiots. You get a free online visit. You go to forhims.com forhims slash idiots. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash idiots. These prescription products are subject to doctor approval. 
uh, to determine if a prescription is appropriate. You see the website for full details, safety information. This could cost hundreds of dollars if you went to an in-person doctor's office or pharmacy. Luckily, you don't have to do that. Remember, that's 4 slash idiots. Get your hair. Now let's get back to the show. Um, did you read Chris Rock's article? Um, I don't know if it was the New York Times. It was the Times, yeah. Somebody, uh, Neil Brennan sent it to me last night. Salute to Neil. Yeah. I thoroughly Johnson enjoyed Neil, it. man. Salute to my guy, Neil. I thoroughly enjoyed it only because Chris Rock is one of the most brilliant minds that I feel like our generation has seen. Not even just comedy. I just like his very common sense approach to, 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 to just life. You yes. know what I'm saying? Like he's, he's a brilliant guy. Yeah, Undeniably brilliant guy. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and Legendary comedian and just philosopher. Yeah. He's a philosopher, dude. A lot of things he said went viral. Um, he said he wasn't offended by Jimmy Fallon's blackface bit. And then he also said, I can't say this because then I'm the bad guy or something like that. What was the context uh, of that? He's like, I don't, I don't want to cancel everybody for the past. But at the same time, like, if I say I'm not offended, then everybody goes, oh, my God, you're a piece of now shit. Now Chris Rock is canceled. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah, I mean, listen, I didn't, I, the, the thing, right? Like, I feel like I keep telling y'all cultural context matters. You know what I'm saying? Now, um, is there ever a right time for white people to wear, wear blackface? No, only because I think throughout history, we've seen it never ends well. Right. But in that moment, nobody gave a fuck because they was just looking at Jimmy Fallon as imitating Chris Rock. Now, the question in that moment is, if Chris Rock's not offended, can black people be offended for him? Because Chris Rock was the one being spoofed. That was a very specific spoof. It wasn't a, I'm wearing blackface and I'm doing a minstrel show and this is my depiction of all black, black people. people. Yes, yes, yes. I'm yes, yes, doing yes. Chris Rock in particular. So who should be offended by that? Chris Rock or all black people? That's good. That's an interesting thing. Like, if you are trying to be a specific person or thing, and as long as you do that person or thing justice, is it offensive? Is blackface offensive if you're truly going for, a, a, you know, a comedian or a character or even like a Marvel book, uh, you know, a Marvel book, a Marvel character? Like, is it? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. But I mean, I, I do feel like cultural context matters when he says, when he said he don't think Jimmy Fallon is racist. I believe him. Yeah. I don't think Fallon is racist. I think what Chris said is true. It was just bad comedy. Well, does it make it? Yeah, it was bad comedy. Bad comedy. And Fallon's got plenty of that. But I, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder like if doing something that is racist makes you racist. If doing something makes you racist, if doing so, it depends, right? What, like if, what what if, what 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 Jimmy Fallon did with the blackface? Yeah, blackface is definitely considered racist, but right. we know what the context was. He was doing an impression of Chris Rock. Could he have done that impression without the blackface? Sure, sure. okay, but right. he didn't. Now, I guess here's my question: Is like if you're not intending to be racist, and you do something that people find racist. Does that make you racist? No, but you can be you can you can unintentionally commit a racist act. Yeah, you can be racist, yes. but I don't think it makes you racist. No, 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 no. Like no, no. I, I think a lot of times it's just ignorance. Now, you know? it can make you racist. Go. Because when you do something like Jimmy Fallon did that was unintentionally racist, yes. and then people attack you for it and yes. start calling you all type of names and this and that, at some point you're gonna say, I hate these N-words. Mm. Yes. At some point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. At some point, just like when you're getting attacked by any group, at some point, like man, I hate these guys. You know I mean, what I mean? I've seen it a million times. You get cut off by a woman driving. You know what it is? You'll be you'll, you'll be so upset. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, let's be yeah. honest. You're not a woman you're, cuts you off. You're driving? not sexist, but when you're driving and a woman does something like that, you like. It might be true what it's, they say about women driving. It's three second rule. You know when you drop some food, you can pick it up and eat it. <laughs> you got three seconds to be sexist, racist, homophobic, whatever you want. That is a good fucking. It's point. three seconds, and then after you calm down, you go Bruh, shoot it and see me. That's not her fault. You know what you are in that initial reaction. If that's what when, when that shit it, hits your gut, gut yeah, yeah. If yeah, a gay yeah. slur is the first thing that comes <laughs> to your mind, if a if a slur against women, a yep. slur against black people, white people, yep, eh, yeah. Don't dismiss that you got a little bit. Also, also, yo, yo, let's real talk. If you get cut off, right, 
If you get cut off, right, and you just run to a gay slur, and the person ain't cut you off gay or nothing, like he just cut you off. No, oh, no, you're not. No, you just a '90s motherfucker. You, you are '90s. Yeah, that's as just fuck. The, yeah, that's, just that's the 90s. '90s yeah, that's, as fuck. That's that. that, 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 that. Doesn't Chris Rock have a joke about that? That's funny. We're even talking about Chris Rock, where he said it's okay to use the f word. Yeah. He's like, if there's a specific thing, what, Charlotte? What? <laughs> what, what? 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 You staying away from I don't that? Ever, I don't want nobody to take that clip out of context. Oh, okay. All you see is Andrew Schultz saying it's okay. Use the F word. Yeah, yeah. Well, Chris, Rock, <laughs> the black guy. No, they're not even gonna put that. All they're gonna say is, "It's okay to use the F word." That's it. <laughs> well, they don't know what F word. Fargo. Fargo. Yes. Oh, that's why Chris is doing promo because he got Fargo, Fargo yeah, coming for out. Fargo for Fargo. Mm. But no. The 90s was a different time. And that's why people have to understand cultural context. Because you'll go back and you'll listen to some of your favorite beloved rappers now use those gay slurs. They weren't even using them in the context of gay. Yeah. They weren't calling you that because they thought you were gay. Yeah. They just thought you were the gay slur. I tell this story all the time about my father. My father. I mean, you, what? some of them might be trying to insult you by calling you gay. That's fair to say. Because okay. they well, saw it as like a lack of masculinity. All right. Well, Jada Kiss says in a rap, yeah. perhaps for instance, I'll give this gay slur a French kiss. That's clearly not meant to be the actual slur. Because what you're really admitting is you want to kiss. What, can I have the context? Kiss somebody that in the same sense? Sense? That, that <laughs> sounds fucking crazy. <laughs> Hold, on. Hold on. Perhaps, Hold on. for instance, this gay slur, I'll give a French kiss. Hold on. I'm going I'm to I'm show you something right now. Complex has this great. This great list called the gayest lyrics of all time. It's the 69 most pause worthy lyrics in hip hop history. Okay. All right. Anything. Now, me. hold on. I'm going to pull up somebody. I'm going to, hold on. Okay. Now, I never thought about this. This is Nas on Ether. Okay. Dick sucking lips. Why won't you let the late great veteran live? Because think about it. You know, you see a fly woman. And back in the day, you want to holler at you, you're like, yeah, ma, let me live. So you see a man and you say, dick sucking Yo, lips. Yo, that's true. Won't you why are you saying a guy has, live? why are you saying a guy has dick sucking <laughs> lips unless you're thinking, whoa, he could probably do some good dick sucking with those lips. <laughs> Yo, Nas, we need to have a conversation about that. I know he didn't mean it in that way, but that's whoa. how it came out. It might not only be Godson across the belly. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a, a lot of Nas sons across the belly. If you ask Yo, me. My, young, yeah, and by the way, I love all of these guys. It's, okay, the same, it's a shame that I'm talking about some of my favorite rappers of all time. Okay. Young Jeezy says, Oh, Jeezy. You can miss me with that he can't rap shit. Tell them gay slur ass N words to wrap their lips around my dick. What kind of music? What's going on, guys? Context, like, man. Why is anybody saying anything that rappers are homophobic? They are gay. They, this is very progressive. Yeah, I don't know what this means. This is Tupac off the Thug Nature song. It's the remix. Uh huh. He says, picture me paying for pussy when the dick's for free. Hey, now, where my niggas at? No, he doesn't say that. Yes, he does. And please, he doesn't say it the way you said it. He didn't. He didn't. Picture me playing pussy for a dick for free. Hey now, hey now. I'm no just, way, dude. Bro, I'm just. So I'm trying to find this one DM. All right, line. keep going. This is really hold on, fun. Hold on, hold on, yeah, hold on. Al, scroll through so I can look at some too. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Oh, okay, pull it right up. There. Yeah, pull it up. That's uh -huh. it. That's the. Oh my God. What I happened? forgot we got produced. We got production. Go, go. Okay. That's the Nas line right there. Okay. But Dick go sucking up. lips. Go, go, up, go up. Go up. I'm go trying up. to find. The other way, Al. The other way. The other up. Then Kanye West on Gossip Files. Kanye Keep says. Going up. Kanye says. It's actually no, right it's, there. It's numbered. Go to number 51. Baby boy, go hire a squadron. My crib got more poles than a fire department. That's. I, I saw that one. I get what why that would be a pause. But yo, listen, go to go Cameron. to number go to fifty one. Oh no, 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 stop! Go, go, go back, go back, go, go, go to Guru. God bless the dead. Guru, S to the next. Uh, my ex girls got, got balls. balls. I get what he's trying to say. I don't. But in this progressive era, wait, wait, what is he trying to say? My ex, like she got balls. She got confidence, courage. You know what I mean? It's you never heard of. I have, but not said that way. It's, it's, it's very it's patriarchy. 
Why don't you say my ex-girl's brave? Because that was patriarchy back then. This is all very, like, nuanced, <laughs> nuanced, like... Yo, if an alien just read these words, they'd be like, yo, black dudes are gay. <laughs> go, to, go, to, go to 51. Go to 51. <laughs> go to 51. Imagine that. Yeah. This is the only thing aliens are the reading, not bro. Up. Yeah, it says 62. 61. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, there you go. 62. Go to 52. 52. No, fi- yeah. 50. Oh, no. <laughs> Matter of fact, go to 52 and 51. All right, 52. 52. 52. This is Red Man. Salute to my guy, Red, Red Man. Red Man's wild, though. Red Man says that light skinned brother with mad shaft up your fucking ass. But he could be talking to girls. Yeah, but he can also be saying that light skinned brother. brother. No, he's the light skinned brother. Red but Man R is could the light skinned brother. Another light skinned brother. But most likely, it's his True. dick is up a girl's butt. I'm with you, but yeah. I'm still pausing. Guys, that. let me explain rap to you. This is how it works. Go to 51. <laughs> Go to 51. 51 is amazing. It's Kanye West. Because we, they leaders, and they the followers, and we the nut buses, and they the swallowers. So he's talking about women. I mean, I don't know. Because I don't you know, can't bro. just be women's leaders. 50 is good too. You think it's sexist? Yeah, it's probably sexist, but he didn't, name a, he didn't name a, a gender in that, though. <laughs> 50 is good, but that's a reach. The boys in the hood are always hard. Rest in peace, Easy e It's one on here that is so wild, bro. Hold on, I'm trying to find Yo, it. I get in butt styles <laughs> like a hard-up homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to read that like a rap. Swimming in my daddy's big nuts. <laughs> Hold on. So insane, Hold on. I caused colon blow brain. Bro, and by the way, God bless the dead. I thought Biggie had the greatest Gay pause where we learned all the time. No, DMX got him beat by a long shot. Okay, this is DMX on top shot. Go to number 37. Okay. Now, there's no explain. Now, you, you know how we've had, we've mentioned a couple of these and we can explain them. <laughs> yeah. There's no explain this. Go to 37. What does that say? Motherfucker, I'll rip your butthole out of place. Motherfucker, I'll rip your butthole out of place. <laughs> wow. <laughs> DMX had a few of those, though. Yes, he's DMX the best. DMX had a few of those. Yeah, that's terrible. There's terrifying. no explaining that's ripping a motherfucker's thing. butthole out of face. Yeah, that's... Out of place. Yeah, imagine a guy said that to you. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Oh. That would be so scary. So, DMX was the original booty goon. No, what, DMX what got some that? wild <laughs> What do you bro? say? Oh, doesn't Big Pun have a lot of questionable stuff? No, Big Pun does not have questionable stuff. Well, he does have one. What was that? what it's called, though. He just says when you awaken, your manhood will be taken. It is. Yeah, but... Now, this is wild. Go to oh. number 27. 27. Oh, my. Go to 27. And they're just getting gayer as we go down here? Good. Okay. Oh, Black yeah. Rob. Whoa. You have to read this one. <laughs> <laughs> Finger near a nigga asshole like, whoa. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Why would your finger be near a guy's asshole? I have no idea. Could he be referring to a woman as an N-word? Maybe. Go to 25. Yeah. Go to 25. <laughs> 25 is good, too. This is my man, Eric Sermon. Yeah, shout out to Eric The Sermon, name of this bro. song is Who's Booty? Okay. Eric Sermon says, you can call me gay or tutti fruity, but I won't touch it until I know who's booty. <laughs> <laughs> That's we not making none of this up. Oh, my God. Number 24 is my man, Jada Kiss on Last okay. Days. Hearing you out is senseless. Perhaps, for instance, I give this gay slur. A French kiss. That actually sounds mad polite. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Hearing you out is senseless, okay? I'm kissing you. You're not going to talk me out of it. That's what it sounds like. Okay, let's go. It That's me like, too. It's like Exactly. A, That's a me too. That is me too. It's Different a gay context, me too. cultural context, guys. Shouts to Jada with the heat. At least too, the other bro. one wasn't me too. He said he, he has to know the booty. Okay, 50 Cent Piggy Bank. Can we go to that one? Uh, yeah, yo, bring the condoms. <laughs> I'm in room two. <laughs> <laughs> God, out of context, yo, bro. Go That's to 14. crazy. Yo, we need to, you, complex our genius. Y'all need to be. Y'all need to do. I saw my salute to my man Mac. Mac is an old intern of mine. But, yeah. uh, now Mac does mornings on uh, Power ninety nine in Miami with Trick and Trina. He does this thing called the Pause Police. Uh huh. They need to bring this back and ask these rappers about these. Oh, lyrics, that'd yo. be hilarious. DMX on Go to Sleep says niggas tried to holler but couldn't holler back. Now they got to swallow everything in the sack. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Yo, come bro. on, D. Bro. Just call DMX back, bro. guys. Whatever you do. Bro. If DMX calls you, call him back immediately. 
It's <laughs> in Exhibit. Hold on. Go to 11. This is Exhibit. Pimp my ride, man. Listen to what Exhibit says. <laughs> exhibit says, just because niggas get behind you don't mean they got your back. Beware the serpent. Yo, come on, bro. <laughs> yo, come on, yo, come on yo. bro. Come on, hey, yo. yo, rest in peace, Biggie Smalls. Biggie said, niggas press their luck and they get a butt fucking straight up the ass. Raw dog with the rash. And I don't fuck with the condoms. <laughs> bro, why do we say pause at all? I get why there is this level of pause within the black community because no, y'all are gay as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't say pause, you may not know. By the way, we're gay with lyrics. We're white gay people are life. gay with actions. Yeah, yes, like white like, like white boys would do like the baloney tossing on each other's ass. You know wait, what I mean? What? what? No, we'll just. I, know. I never <laughs> heard that one. Yo, y'all just you just made some the shit tea up, bagging. Bro. Yeah, we slap each other's dicks. Yeah, that's funny. But baloney on a guy's ass—that's super gay, y'all never bro. Did the baloney tossing? No, what is oh, that? Okay. Um, uh, what is that? No, what's baloney tossing? Is it see if it sticks to the ass? Yeah, probably, they right? throw the baloney and see if it'll stick. We to don't the do ass. that, dude. We don't. And then eat they bologna. eat it afterwards, like right off the guy. We don't ass. do that. We'll <laughs> like wrap our shaft around our wrist and pretend it's a watch. Impossible. <laughs> what? A white person has a, that type of penis. Okay, a bracelet, but still. <laughs> a ring. This, is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is a ring. This is said a ring. Go to number seven. Go to number seven. <laughs> this is Farrell Munch. Farrell Munch. Better believe I butt fuck MC <laughs> from the rear. Oh, he's just straight wow. up saying it. Okay, keep going. <sighs> DJ Quick. I don't even want to read that one. Hold on. Now, I never had my dick sucked by a man before, <laughs> but you're going to be the first, you little trick-ass hoe. Then you can tell me just how it tastes. But before I nut, I shoot some piss in your face. I, listen, that's DJ Quick expressing his manhood. That's him saying, keep yeah. playing with me, yo. Yeah. I'm going to put my dick in your fucking mouth and disrespect the shit out of you. Okay. I yeah. don't know. I'm just trying to make it sound cool. Um, Male groupies getting shaky when I come from the rear. That's red man. <laughs> Holy Code to number moly. four. Number four. This is Pharrell. You ain't heard that we swallow guys? Oh. Now this is wild. Now number three is wild. I don't understand number three. This is this is my good old friend Fredro Star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is from Onyx Last Days. Fredro said, my theory is fuck it, sexy niggas get abducted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't No. He's probably calling himself sexy and he's in, he gets a dub. What's by number one? Girls. Oh yeah. You number might got more cash than me, but you ain't got the skills to eat a ass like me. I don't even know how we got on this Yo, son. How did we start talking about this? You brought it up. Why? <laughs> you Why? just you felt like how it, did bro. we get here? You felt like it, it was bro. a deep dive in the rear. <laughs> <laughs> was that a deep dive in the rear that it we did been. just now? It might have been. Jesus Christ. Let's go to some, let's do um things you won't give a fuck about next week, Taylor. Um, let's go. About Trump wants uh, Joe Rogan to moderate. Oh, yes. I'm all for that. What did you say? Joe uh, uh I don't know who started that because I heard two different versions. Mm. I don't know if Joe Rogan was having that conversation and the person he was having a conversation with brought it up and said that he needs to uh, moderated Democratic debate between Joe Biden and yeah. Trump, and Trump agreed. Yeah, he said, I, I do on um, Twitter, yeah. I loved it for self-serving reasons because it sparked a conversation, right. and they had a conversation on The View the next day. Yes. And um, my name came up on The View, and Whoopi Goldberg said she thinks that all the presidential candidates have come to the Breakfast Club, and then Meghan McCain said Charlemagne has asked the best questions of this whole presidential Let's go! Cycle. Shouts to Meghan. Don't be afraid to play that clip, Taylor. You know, I'm not afraid to say when I'm doing things for self-serving purposes. Mm. All right. Mm. <laughs> but she said that I've asked the best questions of the presidential cycle. And um, I think that's dope. And the reason I think that's dope is because what Trump did and the reason Trump will always have the edge, even though that's not good for our democracy. But the reason he will always have the edge on politicians is because he's not a politician. He's a reality show star. Right. So when you talk about somebody having their post on the on what's going on in the world, it's because that is his world. Right. Joe Biden don't know to be like, yeah, I'd love to have Joe Rogan do a debate. He had to wear with all to come on Breakfast Club, but that's because people around him. 
told him to go do it. And he saw all the other Democratic nominees come do it. So he decided he had to do it. But it just shows. He did that on Zoom? He did it on Zoom? He did it on Zoom, yeah. And did you think he was sharp? What did you think about it? Like, is he all there? Biden? Yeah. I mean, he was alive. He was alive. Because yeah. they gave That's him the good. heads up. That's enough. You know what I'm saying? But he was he was too alive. So he he came in shooting too much. Oh, that's when he said the thing. That's like, why he you gave me the you ain't black. black. He was he was on guard. He was ready to go. Yeah. He was like, oh, this Charlemagne's been getting at me and giving me donkey today and yada yada yada. That's he was he was he was, he was too on. He know? was charged up. He was too charged up. But the reason but once again, the reason I love what Trump said, or even what Rogan said, just just by saying that, you get what you're trying to get by having Joe Biden play Despacito on stage or, or having comp Senator Harris wear Timberlands. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're actually getting real cultural cachet because it's coming from an organic place as opposed to looking like you're coming off the private jet with the wrong Tims on, laced up crazy, all your Democratic, you know, partners tweeting about it because they're so culturally clueless that they don't they know think they know hot. you're wearing these instead yeah. of these yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah, 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 yeah. but when you just mention hey yeah i would love to do a debate with joe rogan and joe biden now when joe biden gets asked that question he's gonna say no i think he said no already right didn't he dismiss it or something and he probably dismissed it because of the backlash that bernie sanders got when joe rogan said i'll vote for Bernie Bro, Sanders. It's, if you want to know, if you want to know what a real like uh, media backed smear campaign is, anytime Rogan is introduced to the political sphere, like anytime anybody says, "Oh, Rogan said he he supports this candidate," or "Oh, Rogan's going to do a debate," literally the next day there will be a hit piece about how he's transphobic or homophobic or racist or yeah, misogynistic yeah, yeah, or sexist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything they could do to cut the legs out. But this is how stupid they are. They don't realize that people don't give a fuck. About what some lady on The View says. No. They don't give a fuck about what the New York Times says anymore. No. People care about podcasts. They care about podcasts. They care about people, man. That's what's they so care crazy, about right? People. We say power to the people in America, but politicians don't seem to subscribe to that. You they know don't, what I'm saying? Some get it. I think part of Trump's success is understanding that. Because he's not a politician. Probably. He's in entertainment. He's in enta enta entertainment. And, yeah. and by the way, if you're a politician, right? How can you say, and I'm speaking directly to Democrats here, Yeah. how can you say that you're going to be the president for all of America, but y'all are so quick to dismiss people? Keep going. Like, you shouldn't dismiss Joe Rogan or anybody that listens to Joe Rogan. You shouldn't dismiss, I saw, uh, you know, earlier this year, earlier this summer, you know, the Biden campaign dismissed Linda Sarsour. They dismissed themselves from Linda Sarsour. Linda right, Smith right. is a, a, a progressive, you know, who is on the front lines fighting for all of the social justice that happening to black and brown people in this country. And, you know, she has a, a following, right? Big following. Now, there is some, like, uh, criticism of her, and this is why the campaign tried to dismiss themselves as potentially being anti-Semitic. Distance is the word. Distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Distance themselves from her. And that's why they did, because they're like, oh, I don't want to be attached to this at all, because then they could use this against me when it comes to debate time. Or yeah, it comes to but, even, time. but she's still an American. So are you truly president to all America? Are you truly creating a government or a democracy that represents all Americans? You know what? And this is the thing that you got to credit Barack Obama with. And I know that he gets criticized a lot for this, but like it seemed to me that it was very important to him and his administration to be everyone's president, not black people's president. Yeah, he would say that. And he probably would say that, right? He never said. He never said it. I don't think. I'm pretty sure he never said it publicly. Maybe he did. I'm not sure, but he's definitely said that behind the scenes, from what I've been told. And that is the job. That and, is the job. And that's the thing. And I know that, like in retrospect or in hindsight, a lot of people look back and they're like, "See, he didn't do enough for us. This, that, the other." But the job that he signed up for was to be the president for everybody. That's what everybody signs up for. Exactly. That's, that's what we get mad at Trump for, right? Because he's catering to his specific base and he's alienating people and he's being divisive and he's saying, we don't fuck with them and we don't fuck with them. Yeah. But you're essentially doing the same thing. So, here, so here's the thing. Who gets remembered better, right? Because when I look at, at back at what Barack did, I think that it's admirable that he could put himself up for that type of long-term criticism to do the right job for the most amount of people. Now, Trump will probably be remembered better in history than Barack because his constituents 
will go. He was the greatest ever. Just like Reagan, right? Like Reagan could flood the fucking hood with crack, but his constituents would be like, we don't know anything about that. Reagan is a consummate conservative. Reagan is the one that we have to do. You know why? Because you can't be all things to all people. Exactly. So if you are just servicing your base, maybe history remembers you better. But if you're actually trying to do the job, maybe the country is in a better place. And if you could sacrifice your own personal ego for what the fucking country needs, yeah. take politics out of it. I don't care yeah. if you're left or right listening to this yeah. right now. Get rid of that for a second. If you are literally just trying to do the best job for those eight years that you have, that means sacrificing your ego, yo. And that's something that I don't think Trump can do because I think it's really important to him what his legacy will be with this presidency. And while there's things that he does that I do like, I like his political uh, policy overseas. I'm not a big war guy. I don't want them blowing up innocent fucking Muslims for no reason because these these hacks want to dig oil out of the ground and steal it mm -hmm. or they want these like defense contracts. That being said, I, I have to give Obama credit for his ability to govern the majority of Americans instead of a small group. Or at least try. To. At least try. I mean, listen, yeah. you can't be all things to all people, but here's my thing. When you're the president of the United States of America, all you have to do is be open to everybody's interests. You know what I'm saying? You should be willing to listen to everybody's interests. You know what yeah. I mean? You, can, you, you should be able to be pushed. If the gay community comes and they have a piece of legislation that they want, pushed and they come at you and they're pushing you to do it you feel like doing that do it if black people have an agenda and they want this done get it done if white farmers in fucking the midwest want it done yeah. get it done you can literally look at what everybody's interests are look at everybody's individual agendas and see how we can see how that can you how, how you can be of service to these people because that's all you're here to do is be, as president be oh, of service well then here's my other question which is like in a democracy the majority wins so is your job just to service the majority? Mm. I wonder if that is, by definition, how things should go. Mm. And if these populist presidents are just servicing their base, then they're doing what they're supposed to do. And maybe it's on the rest of us for just sitting on our asses and not voting Well, and allowing that to happen. Here's the thing. That's what you, you bring up a great point. And when you win... By pushing a certain agenda, mm -hmm. right? And you win by saying that you're going to implement certain legislation. If the people that vote for you, vote for you based off those things. You got to do it. And you make that happen. Yeah. If everybody else is just upset that you're in the White House and they don't engage with you, mm -hmm. they don't participate in democracy. Mm -hmm. They're like, fuck that. We just going to wait until a Democrat gets in. Uh, mm -hmm. Fuck that. We just going to wait until a Republican gets in and then we're going to get our interest. Like, that's not good politics. You know what I mean? They did that with Obama too. Yeah. Republicans refused to, to play ball with them. Obama. Yeah. They refused to engage with Obama because yeah. they didn't want to piss off their base. Mm -hmm. That's not good for America. Yeah. What's good for America is when you have somebody in the White House that's Republican or Democrat who listens to the needs of all people and a person that can be pushed. And the reason you can be pushed because you never know. These are all hypothetical votes. That could happen for you in the future. You well, don't know. That's the problem with when a lot of people don't vote or when the majority of people don't vote is that you only have to service the select groups that do. Mm -hmm. If everybody over 18 voted, you better believe the populist president would be reflect his views would be reflective of the majority of people because that would be the only way he could win. When you only have how many people vote in America? I think last election was 80 something million. When you'll have 80 Almost million, 100 maybe, I don't know. Whatever. If you only have that many people vote, right? Then a small swath of the country, let's say 45 million people, could influence the entire election. We got Absolutely. 330 million people here. Absolutely. Why are we letting these politicians pander to 45 million over here or 45 million over here? This is why our politics is so extreme anyway, because only the extremes vote. And all of us in the middle are like, man, the left, all the way on the left, y'all too crazy. And all the way on the right, y'all too crazy. Why can't we just be in the middle? You know why? Because the middle don't fucking vote. And you know That's why? That's on us. You know why the middle don't vote? Because the politicians are just as extreme as the people that vote for them. Well, if we voted, it would pull them in. But they know we're not going to vote, so they just have to pander to those people who Absolutely. do. Absolutely. So if we want to force them to Absolutely. pander to us, then we just got to go out and vote. Absolutely. That's why I love what's happening right now. I love the fact that you have a lot of people who are usually disengaged, you know what I'm saying, dis 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 disinfected, all right, disaffected voters who they're trying to win over. 
in some way, shape, or form. Like, they're forced to talk about issues they've never spoken about. Mm -hmm. Since when has reparations been on the actual goddamn menu? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Since when has black economics been on the menu in the way that it's in right now? Like, they're being forced oh. to talk about things that they've never talked about because they're trying to bring in voters who either fucked with Obama and totally was disgusted by it and didn't show up in 2016 mm -hmm. and they're trying to get them people back are people who've never voted ever before. Because if you're trying to get the largest vote out, voter turnout in American history, you can't just talk to extremes, bro. 100%. Yeah. In a 2016, only 55% of people voting age voted. I mean, it's crazy. That's crazy. Yo, do you think that the stimulus and the way that they did it this time was a trial run for reparations potentially? Mm. I'll back up why I think that might Explain. be. Explain, go. So I was doing a little like research into like the stimulus and like why we did it that way. And I was talking to some guy and he basically explained, I was like, yo, is our money going to be like worthless now? Cause we pumped all this money in. And he goes, no, nah, that's not really how money works. Like money is a reflection of goods to buy. So money only decreases in value when there's more money than there are goods. Right. And the problem with what happened with our economy shutting down is people stop making money. So what we're essentially doing is filling the gap in making money so people can spend money. Mm -hmm. And I go, wait a minute. So spending money is how you keep the economy going? He goes, yeah. It's like we create money out of nowhere all the time. Like loans from banks come out of nowhere. They only need to keep 10% of their deposits in the bank. The mm -hmm. other 90%, they could just loan out. Mm -hmm. It's not even real money. So I go, okay, so spending money is good. And he's like, yeah. And I start thinking, wait a minute. What if they sent out these checks, right? all these people in the country, not just black people, but just the whole country. And they saw what we did with the money. Right. And what if they're like, oh shit, we gave people money and they immediately injected it into the economy and built up the economy, sustained the economy while the whole shit was like screeched to a halt. Wait, what if this economic stimulus plan to black people in America, literally through cash would actually benefit not only black people, but the Puerto Rican businesses they spent their money at, the Mexicans the, yeah, they spent their money at, the yeah. white people they spent their money at. Like, yeah, if they're not thinking that, they're nuts. But I think a lot of people, when they hear the term, they just fundamentally don't understand how an economy works, right? It, it, it's it's a pretty tricky thing in terms of like the value of money. The value of money is, is based on it being spent, not it being hoarded, right? So I start looking like, yo, what if they do the numbers and they're like, black people are spending their stimulus in these types of places and actually like, it would be really beneficial if we injected that type of money in these economies. Maybe they start, they maybe they start organizing something that's like, yo, this could be really good for America, everybody. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, the more that people- That makes sense, the, yes, what I just Yes, said? the more people that got money in their pocket, the more corporations make because people spend fucking yes. money. Especially and, and you spend. know what Americans spend money on? Yeah. Joy. Yes. We spend money on happiness. Yes. That's the fr Why you think people couldn't wait to just get out and go to a restaurant after this pandemic? Motherfuckers won't be in the club so bad. Motherfuckers will go buy these. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Motherfuckers will go buy these just to say they got some Tims because they think having this tree on their foot makes <laughs> them cool. They just want to, people want to feel good. They want to feel joy. Yeah. America is the joy capital of the fucking world. Yeah. We, is there any other country that says they go joy riding? <laughs> no. I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are the joy. We love joy. 95% yeah. of what Americans do, black, white, Spanish, Asian, it don't matter, yeah. is for joy. Yeah. It, it's, it's happiness purposes. Somebody listening to this podcast right now, because brilliant it is, brings them joy. Yeah. Like, literally, like, we love joy. So, yes, the money will go right back into the joy economy. Interesting. Period. Interesting to think about, you know, if there's a financial benefit of course it well, is. Because you know people ain't going to do shit unless it benefits them. Like Listen, I'll give you a perfect example. This yeah. is just a hood example. Yeah. The first and the 15th when I used to sell crack was the shit. Yeah. The reason the first and the 15th was the shit because that's when people got their checks. Right. Whether it was the welfare checks, whether it was whatever government check, whatever the child support, whatever the fuck it was, first and 15th we know people got their checks. The trap would jump. Because people were trying to find joy in crack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. A lot of joy in the it. The liquor stores would be booming. booming. Yeah. Like, because that is what people like. So, yes, it would essentially be the same thing. Interesting. You inject money into the economy, people are going to put the money right back into the economy. So then what happens if this reparations happen? That reparations happens and the money gets spent just as fast as our stimulus money was spent, mm -hmm. 
And then after that, there's still systemic oppression. There's still cops killing black people. That's why checks aren't good. That's why it shouldn't be a one time payment. You that, know what I'm saying? That, that's it, what I'm saying. Like, no, it should we, be, it should, we, we have, as you said earlier, got to change the system. Right. So it's like, and we've spoken about this before. A lot of people are like, yo, I just, just give us the check, cut the check, this, that, the other. I'm like, I don't think people realize how fast you can spend this type of money. Easily. And it will go. And then afterwards, there will be no sympathy for the black cause and the black struggle in America by anyone because they're everybody else is going to be like, yo, we paid y'all. Y'all they had can, your money. They, they can say we gave y'all financial atonement. So that's mm -hmm. why I think it should be like economic equity packages that help to change the whole system, the, edu the system of education, you know, the system of economics. You know what I mean? Like it's all of these, like the, the system of, 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 of health. You know what I mean? People need to get free physical health care and free mental health care. I don't you think know we should saying? pay taxes. You don't think it should be taxes? <laughs> I don't think we should have to pay taxes. They're killing us and stuff like that. And we got to pay the cut. Like, um, I'm good on the tax. Somebody might argue. They might go like, hey, white people also get killed by the cops. Should they not pay taxes? You don't see on the news like that. It's not like a very hot news story, but it is statistically. I, know, I mean, I'm happens. not saying that white people don't get killed. I'm just saying what people see black people what's the list that goes down you know what i mean right right I right you like can hear it yeah you get what? what i don't want the, i don't want the republicans to get no ideas and invite taylor to the next town hall <laughs> have her sitting in the front row <laughs> they what? put the camera on yes. taylor i don't want to pay, pay taxes <laughs> and i want free snapple Wherever I go, I want free Snapple and I don't want to pay taxes and that's it. I do. Okay? Y'all killing us. Out. Yeah, y'all killing us. But white people get killed by the cops too. It ain't on the news. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is my thing. Like, y'all putting us on the news all the time, selling advertisements on the news. Where's our cut from that? Yep. Yo, like, real talk, you need to get your, your <laughs> what is it called? You need to own your masters. Like, if the news is selling advertisements and black people are always on the news, where's your cut? Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yo, that's a good ass point. Like, why does the news not have to pay for having us on they it. They should pay us. No. They you should. selling paper towel ads? A lot, ads? Of these, a, lot of these, right. a lot of these outlets should prop, should be paying black people because they profit off black pain. Yeah. I'm not, I'm serious. Like we, 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 Think we, about we it. press these corporations, we press these companies. We should start pressing a lot of these media outlets. If CNN, the director of CNN is going, yo, find out where they were racist today and what they did to black people today. We're going to run it at eight o'clock. Yo, CNN, you're making millions of dollars off of the fuck shit that happens to black people. You might as well pay some money to black people. I agree. They act all woke, but they're really taking advantage of your pain. Give me, give me another one, Taylor. Uh, well, first, you guys want to do um, another? Oh, you want to do the mirror? Okay, let's do it. Let's go. What else we got? Okay, let's take a break. Uh, we was just talking about therapy, man. You know, therapy is something that I that I love. Okay, so I want y'all to know out there if there's something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals, you need to seek better help okay better help will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist for everybody that's always hitting Charlemagne up saying Charlemagne you know what do you look for in a therapist you know how did you know you found the right therapist i found the right therapist by doing research about a bunch of different therapists and this is what better help helps you to do okay you can start communicating in under 48 hours it's not a crisis line it's not self help it is professional counseling done securely online there's a broad range of expertise available which may not be locally available in many areas the service is available for clients worldwide you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor you'll get timely and thoughtful responses plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if it's needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. You can visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Now, if you're like me, you might deal with a little, you might deal with some anxiety, you might deal with some depression and, you know, you go to therapy once a week, but sometimes it might hit you on weekends, might hit you on days that aren't your therapy days. You can visit betterhelp.com slash brilliant. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states, okay? Special offer for our listeners. You get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash brilliant. That's betterhelp.com slash brilliant.
Guys, uh, this episode is also brought to you by Clothes That Fit Better, okay? One of the things that can boost your confidence more than anything else is feeling good in what you're wearing. And feeling good in what you're wearing, the easiest way to do that is have that thing customizable. There's no way you have small, medium, large, and we're all going to fit into this. It doesn't fit you perfectly, but there is a way that you can get fit perfectly for clothing and it doesn't kill your budget, all right? Indochino was started on the belief that custom clothing shouldn't cost a fortune. With Indochino, you can get... Made to measure clothing at fair prices, including suits, blazers, shirts, and coats. You get to customize everything from the fabric, the lining, to the lapel shape, the monogram. The choice is all yours. Your clothing is then made to your exact measurements, so it fits you perfectly. And the best part is Indochino suits start at $299. If you never bought a suit, then you know that that is a bargain. If you bought a custom suit, you know that that is an insane bargain. You're never going to get a custom suit for anything close to that. I'm telling you, with all the customizations included, $299 is a steal. Indochino has showrooms across North America, or this is the dope part, you can book a virtual appointment and shop online at Indochino.com. All right, so now you can get an extra $30 off in any purchase of $399 or more at Indochino.com when entering idiots at checkout. That's idiots. Indochino. Dot com promo code idiots go get your life together right now all right let's get back to the show um andrew gillum you interpret what's andrew that do? gillum what are we still doing things we won't care about next week um i mean listen man when i watched the andrew gillum thing on tamron hall i honestly felt like i was impeding on somebody's healing process I felt like I was watching something that I should not be watching. I understand that, you know, when you're a public figure, you know, things happen in public and, you know, you have to come out and address them um, or you don't. I think in Andrew's situation, when you're a politician, it's kind of like it's kind of like being on injured reserve and the playoffs are going on. Wait, what is what is going on Did with Andrew Gill? Oh, yeah. Andrew spoke on Tamron Hall and he came out and he said that he is bisexual. Apparently, he also ghost wrote for a lot of rappers. What? <laughs> 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 this guy is so crazy, man. <laughs> you know, it was, Andrew's Andrew's the person I consider a friend. You know what I'm saying? Um, I love his wife, RJ. Yeah, you do know him. Right? I know him. You know what I'm saying? So it just feels like. I was intruding on a conversation or a healing process that somebody's trying to go through. That's really none of my business. But what's the deal? There's nothing to heal, right? He just likes sucking cocks. The healing that needs to happen is the fact that he embarrassed himself and he embarrassed his family. But we knew that when he was found in the hotel room. Doesn't make it guys. any easier, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't know what he's been dealing with the past whatever, six months, seven months. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like that's something that he doesn't owe anybody. But here's the thing that's odd. He came out as bi. Yeah. Now, do you believe in that? Clearly. He's got kids. He's married. Clearly. That is the pure definition of being bisexual. Clearly. He's got he's got kids. He's married. He married a woman. He grew to love a woman. But this, he so also likes that, too. He likes my penis. girl doesn't... Uh, eat dairy she's allergic to it right and i can eat dairy right but since she doesn't when we go out to eat so we could ch share each other's food and stuff like that i just don't eat dairy true you know what i mean if you were truly bi wouldn't you just not no eat it no and just go with the thing that you're married to and eating no because based off your logic my girl likes dick Maybe we should eat dick together. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm just saying. It's just like maybe y'all need a boyfriend. I'm serious. I'm just maybe. I'm just. I don't. I don't know. And it's. I, I just. I'm just saying. If you were bi, this is a real question. I'd like to ask people who are bi, who identify as bi. If you are bi and it was truly even, like you just loved women as much as you love men, the societal pressure and oppression that you would go through for being the gay side of bi just seems not worth it. So you might as well just do the guy girl stuff and not do the bi stuff because yeah, that's, that's going to cost. So to me, what I see is I see someone who's more gay than they are straight 
and they try to do the straight thing, but it really ain't what they're about. And eventually they, the dam just breaks and they just need dicks. Maybe not though. Maybe it's a 50, 50 thing. Like, I mean, for I, guys though, huh? versus girls, that's bisexual. Cause the cost said, of being what bi. What'd you say? What'd you say? What? What did you say? I don't know. I said it depends on the sex, though. You're talking about a male or I'm talking about male. The too. cost of being gay for a guy is way higher than the cost of being gay for a girl. Is it, though, in 2020? Like, yes. what the fuck? Yeah, I think, I think so. If my girl said she did some gay shit in college, whatever. If I said to my girl that I was sucking on dicks in college, you would listen. All jokes aside, dude, if you told that would me be right crazy, now, Andrew, like, that you were sucking dicks in college, there would be some <laughs> jokes made. You know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't give a fuck. You wouldn't give a fuck. But if you're my girl, and then you found out that me in college dicks getting sucked on, well, you don't need to be with her anyway because she's too judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this judgmental woman you're with? This woman that does not want to give you the same grace that she wants God to give her. Who is she to judge you? No, I mean, your argument is 100% right, but I think deep down a girl, and Taylor, you could speak for us. Do you think that it would be a little bit more of an issue for you getting over the fact that like the guy that you were dating was sucking on lots of dicks? Why does he have me sucking on lots of dicks? Hey, why not like, one? Like, like, first you did one for one. one in college. I've never it's said one. It's <laughs> multiple. You take one dick, you're going to take more than one. That's not true. You might suck one in college and be cool. That's but if you suck insecure. one in college, then it's done. Who but, makes y'all think? What makes y'all think dicks are like Lay's potato chips? I might can eat just one. It's Pringles. <laughs> it's Pringles? <laughs> sure. Just once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> and to be honest, the, the Pringles can kind of looks like a big old dick. If that's what you like. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you like, you would go for Definitely the not what I'm starting with, Charlamagne. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is I think girls are a little bit more judgmental with that. I don't think you're cool with that. Nah, it ain't judgmental. Call it what the, the fuck gay. it is. There's no double standards here. They it's are homophobic. homophobic. You're homophobic. Women are homophobic. Yes. That's not homophobic. You have your little, yes, it is. You no, have your little right. gay friends and you do all the gay shit with right. them and you think you love That's them. Right. But if your boyfriend was gay, you would be incredibly homophobic because about why would, Because then he's not thinking about my pussy to about someone else's dick. He's yes, imagining your pussy's a butthole. Let's go back. Let's, <laughs> let's go back to the three second rule. Let's go back to the three second rule. Oh, God. You find out your boyfriend was sucking another man's dick. What's the first thing you think in your gut? Be honest. <laughs> if you said ew... If no. you thought of a gay slur, I don't think it's if Ill, you thought though. that's disgusting, you're homophobic. Think, no, I don't think none of that's disgusting. So what was the, what was I just don't thought? want well, my man. Why, why couldn't you say I'm the first gonna thought I'm going to think was? that he's gay. He's gay because he's gay. I'm not, I don't have a problem You got to be gay people. to be bi. So you could date a gay man. You could date that's a bi man. That's not true. Why? You don't have to. Some girls like ball players. Some girls like ball players. (laughs) 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 So look, actually. Energy's different in the room, bro. (laughs) In the room. We got to be in the room. That actually happened in high school. Like my friend. You he, always got a friend. Yeah. He's like one of my best friends. Okay. He uh-huh. came out as bisexual. He was new to the school and everything else like that. Mm-hmm. We, girls found out. Everyone thought he was cute, blah, blah, blah. And then we found out that he liked... Um, Getting smoked. <laughs> he, you know, liked the dick, whatever, <laughs> like that. But I had a girl still dating him for that, whatever. <laughs> as I personally, But I was... I don't want that, though. As like, long as you especially give... Especially if it, my dude will be a bottom. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I would at least oh, want my dude so to be you, a top. Uh, we that's, know, not about, that's not homophobic. We didn't say yeah. nothing about look. DMX saying ripping buttholes out of place. We yeah. were talking about your boyfriend's buttholes can get ripped out of place. We didn't say nothing about being bottoms and all of that. But seriously, I'm bottom excited, would be harder though. for you to accept, right? Yes. If your boyfriend was just getting torn apart and then he was coming over to your apartment and then, and then, then you guys are having sex. Me. I just feel like that's weird. Like I want. But you think when he's hitting it from the back for you and like you think he's like, oh, come on, girl, you can take more than that. Like, I know that. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, it ain't hurt that bad. Man, like, come like, on. All, this, all this screaming and moaning she's doing. You know what I did last night? Please. You ain't taking nothing. Listen, I don't care. I think that a woman shouldn't care or a man shouldn't care as long as you give somebody the power to choose. If I tell you that I'm bisexual, then you, from that point on, get to make a choice. Yeah, but think about it though. But I guess I don't know. I don't think it's homophobic. By the way, it seems homophobic, but I don't think it's homophobic because maybe what you find attractive in a man is that man's attracted. uh, How attractive men are to women. Like maybe there's something about that. Why wouldn't you be more attracted that he's attracted to everybody? 
Because then she got to share that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I guess for me, we like the fact that our girls might be into another girl because then that could give us a threesome and that's just more pussy for us. So it's like anything that's more pussy. We don't really care that our girl is into another girl. Like, you ever watch like girl on girl porn? That shit is a snooze so fest. I don't, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't want a threesome. You want to throw that out there? You don't want a threesome. That's how I know you want a threesome. No, I don't. Because you said some shit like, take the bread off the table. We're not eating bread. <laughs> like, that's how you said that, right? Like, like that's the way, he, like, nobody asked him. Right? Like, nobody, nobody said nothing. Charlotte May, how would you feel about a threesome? You were just like, I don't want a threesome, babe, in case you listen to the podcast. I, just in case. I don't. I don't. I don't though. <laughs> now Taylor. No, 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 no. Don't come off it. Why don't you want one, bro? Yeah. I don't have the desire. Because at the present moment. At, I'm, not saying that, I'm not saying that might not change in the future, but I mean I think things and by the way, I I think shit like that is dope because like you're experimenting sexually with the one you love. I think as long as whatever you and your partner are doing, you and your partner are doing, yeah. I think it's fine. What if your girl, what if your wife, right, or my girlfriend, what if they brought to, to us this idea of having a threesome with another guy? You gotta get a divorce, bro. Like, yo, <laughs> yo Dr. Dre, Ray J, Cardi B, <laughs> pass me the numbers to your goddamn divorce attorneys. <laughs> No, that's disrespectful. Why would she disrespect me like that? Uh, why? I don't think it's disrespectful. I think all of experimentation I I together, no, I think it's beautiful it? as long as y'all are doing it together and experimenting as a couple. Those standards you. exist. I know. Oh, There's scary. certain things my ego will never be able to fully embrace. I will always have a wounded ego when it comes to that type of stuff. I right. will never be able to handle that. Yes. My ego as a man is too fragile right. to be in there with another man having sex with a woman that I have put so much time, effort, and energy into. Right. You know what I mean? This is my wife and I'm just going to share you okay. with another man? No. Could I a man give your wife a massage? Yeah, yeah. That's happened. I think. Yeah, that's happened. Okay. What if you're getting a couple's massage and the guy's giving her Been a there. massage Been and there. then all of a sudden you hear from her like, mm-hmm. you get <laughs> what the fuck's going on over there? You know what I mean? You take we, your head out of the donut? But I've done that. We, we've done that. We've done a couple of massages. And, and it's, I've, I've, a man is massaged her. I don't be tripping off that. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Interesting. My girl I, would always I, order a girl masseuse for her and a girl masseuse for me. The men have stronger hands for a woman. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So I'm not mad at that. I don't be, I don't, okay. I don't be, I don't, I'm not, I'm not that insecure, but I'm not going to sit in a room and just watch you. Dick I down my goddamn exactly woman. That yeah, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a little crazy. Like, come on. Yeah, that's a lot. I, I, I need to meet the man whose ego is that healed and that beautiful that he can deal with that. Uh, yeah, I don't need to. Mm-mm, I can't. I, me personally, I can't. I think that that's severe wounding. Yes. Like, I think people yes. act like they're whole. Now, yes. they're the most empty. Yes. If you're fi- getting something out of that, like, to me, what that says is you feel so inadequate that the only way that you can feel like you can satisfy your girl is if another guy fucks. Yes. What if the girl isn't like, what if the guy isn't fucking the girl though? What if she, he just wants his ass ate and you fucking her while he, I'm gonna let my girl eat his ass. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yo, Taylor, Taylor, I, Taylor, yo, 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 honestly, yo, 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 Taylor, wait, wait, wait. Taylor, I'm honestly, this question because Taylor, <laughs> honestly, eat honestly, the ass, Taylor? honestly, I don't know what you just said, but it made me angry. If I'm, <laughs> if, 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 I'm asking let's just say hypothetically, <laughs> If I was ever doing that with my girl and she ate a man's ass in front of me, I I, I honestly I don't know what to say. I'm DMing Cardi B right there and say, "Give me the divorce lawyer's number right fucking now." I'm horrified at the and idea. I'm putting that in the court documents. <laughs> that got to go in the court. We document. had a threesome. And she ate another divorce, man's ass. She ate another man's ass and say it like, even everybody if, would understand it, bro. Even if like your lawyer's like, please don't mention that. That's the first. That's thing. That's the first thing. Yeah. yeah. Everybody By would the way, understand. Yeah, yeah. Irreconcilable differences. Yes. We never know what those are when we hear them. Now we know. I'm detailing mine. We was doing a threesome that I didn't want to do. She convinced me. I'm just doing it to keep my marriage happy. Yep. She ate a motherfucker's ass in front of me. Yup. Come on, man. No, that's crazy. Come on, bro. Come on, yeah. you went too far. You yeah, went too no, fucking far. The moral of the story is, I pray for Andrew Gillum. I pray for his family. I want him to get the healing he deserves. Andrew does not owe anybody anything. Now, do you think he has a future in politics again? He might have a brighter future. He just I needs so to, too. like, he just needs to lean into it. But the tricky thing about him is, 
can you trust the man that was doing that to his family? Well, like if why you watched you? the interview on Tamron Hall, his wife. She knew the whole time? She, 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 she seemed like she did. I think I don't, I don't know if she said it verbatim, but she did allude to the fact she knew. Ah, then he can be fine and they the had an arrangement. Time. Now, all he did, and so technically all he did was, if, if that's the case, all he did was sneak around. Well, if she knew it wasn't sneaking. I'm just saying the American public, like, and don't get me wrong, we've had plenty of cheating politicians, but if the American public sees that, remember that guy who had like a, a girl in Argentina, he was running for president, he was like, a center or some shit in South Carolina or North Carolina. Remember that guy? I don't remember. This was back in the day. Anyway, but he, that came out during his campaign and that fucking threw the whole thing off. But John Petraeus, General Petraeus had a little side piece that threw the whole thing off. I don't think the American public likes to look at someone and be like, oh, you lied to the people you love. Why would you not lie to me? But if he had an open relationship no, with I, his girl, I, then that's fine. I, well, I have, to, I have to push back on that a little bit. Go. You lied to the people you love because you love them. It's fear. You don't want to hurt them. You don't want to ruin your marriage. You don't want this person to leave you. That's mm -hmm. why you're sneaking around. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you every didn't... man in here at some point has lied to the woman they love. Nah, bro. Come talking on, about, dog. So. You wildin', bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Yo. you're talking about, bro. I'm I seriously. Black men don't cheat. It don't have to be the woman you with now. I'm just saying at some point you never lied to a woman you love. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't about, know what you're so. White men don't lie, dog. Wow. Okay. Alex is white. All I'm simply saying is... Sometimes it could be a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm simply saying is, sometimes you do lie to the person that you love. That doesn't mean you love them any less. You're loving them to protect them from something. I mean... No. I, you're not yes. protecting her because you're going to get hurt, but you're still hurting her. Like Not if she don't know. Find she finds... It, whatever comes happens in the dark. Not if she don't know. Like, Yo, Donald Trump said the right. illest All shit. All the therapy out the window, <laughs> dog. Like years of therapy. No, I'm just Yo, saying. But if I just get some pussy and she don't no, find no, no. out, then I'm, what's up? I'm speaking from the perspective of a person who's been in that situation. I'm not speaking from the person I am now. Yes, your when goal Donald is not Trump to hurt said yeah. that he didn't tell the American people he played down coronavirus because right. he didn't want to put nobody in a panic. Yes. That is essentially what you do to your household. Yes, 100%. You walk in and be like, hey, guess what I just finished doing? Smell my finger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, kids ain't eating because the, the wife is all depressed and sick and talking yeah. about divorcing you. Why would you do that to your house? Yeah. And first of all, you shouldn't cheat, period. As Patrice O'Neill would say, ladies, cheating is for you. What? Explain. A guy sneaks out of his house in the middle of the night, fucks a girl behind a dumpster just so he could get a little pleasure without disrupting his family, without disrupting his wife, without disrupting that happy home, cheating is for you. Are you That's what Patrice said. I get what you're saying. No. It's joy. <laughs> it's a joy no, ride. it's joy. It's a little joy ride. I'm serious. Like when you, Sometimes you just got to leave the house for a little breather. It's the joy. The joy thing is interesting because what do we call the, the part of the remote that you play video games with? Joystick. There we Bro, go. Bro, it's joy. It's joy, yeah, man. It's girls joy. Girls like to ride other joysticks too. Then. No, oh don't. shit! Oh, no, they don't. Oh, oh really shit! Like. I don't hear that though. Right? No, we don't. That shit is disgusting. <laughs> I, I don't mind. Listen, if you that shit go, is repulsive. Just don't eat their ass, Taylor. I don't no, eat no one's and don't ass. ride their joystick. <laughs> you, you. This is disgusting. The only reason why I asked that question before is because, I mean, I never had a threesome, but I would think like there may be some rules, like maybe the guy can't, maybe the only the girl can only fuck. I mean, suck the dick, but can't fuck the guy or something like that. You can't suck another guy's dick. No, 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 no. I'm That's saying worse. It's, no, no, this no. Is I'm crazy. saying if there's two, <laughs> look, if there's two this girls. If you're getting fucked, at least you're getting some pleasure at it. But if you cheat on me and just suck the guy's oh dick. Oh, my God. So you're cheating on me and destroying what we have just to pleasure the guy. You, you don't do even get some me? pleasure. That's repulsive. Why would you do that to us? I don't think y'all got it. You sucked a man's I dick? Should. I can't believe you sucking dicks. <laughs> get, matter of fact, get up. You just ate his ass. Now you're in front of him. Get up, please. Yeah, take a bath. Please, please, give us a bath, idiots, Taylor. Okay. <laughs> you're, 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 you're just disgusting. I don't know what you're All right, about. who is worse? Oh, sorry. This is by uh, Mage DG01. Who is worse, the Clippers or Cowboys? Clippers. Um, the reason the Clippers, well, here's the thing. The Clippers are worse because they've never won, period. 50 years, they've never even been to the Western Conference Finals. Cowboys at least have won five Super Bowls. Now, the delusion 
that I understand Clippers felt this year was because they really thought they were going to the finals. Like people, ah, were, people they had Cowboys them. delusion. Yes, they had Cowboys delusion. It's a delusion that we've had since 1996, but we've had that delusion because we actually won it's five. It's justified. Super Bowls. It's justified. You're the hot chick that fell off that hasn't realized that hasn't realized it. And the Clippers this year were the hot chick. They got fake tits, and then they thought. Absolutely. That they were that bad bitch, Absolutely. but reality was not. But I call I do call them the Los Angeles Cowboys <laughs> because of the level of delusion. I like scissors. I thought that was I good. love Los Angeles scissors. Yeah. Give us another one, Taylor. By Hallie Ma underscore A. What books has changed your life? Mm. Oh man, so many. Message to the Black Man by Elijah Muhammad. Um, Autobiography of Malcolm X by Alex Haley um, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz The Secret by Rhonda Byrne 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra Those are the ones that changed my life Are You There God? It's Me, Margaret Super Fudge Tales of the Fourth Grade Nothing Really, all those Beverly Clearly Judy Bloom books Because when my mom first told me to read things that don't pertain to me. Those were the first things that I went at because the the people look totally different than me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Ramona yeah. Quimby, age eight. So a lot of those books just showed me that it was other lifestyles out there. It was other cultures. It was other experiences. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. What about you? That's a good question. I always loved uh, Huckleberry Finn. thought it was a cool tale. Um... There's a guy named Dan Brown that's written a lot of like pop science books. I'm sure you guys have heard of it, you know, like uh, Angels and Demons and the Da Vinci yep. Code and stuff like that. But like I've read a bunch of his books and he really taught me like the value of short, digestible chapters. Yes. That's why I'm, I'm never writing a long book ever again. Like ever. three, four, five pages. That's he almost it. wrote in the same way that like sitcoms have like these different storylines. And I learned so much from that because I was like, wait a minute. So this story is done in three pages. I can step away whenever I want, but if I want to keep going, it's only two or three or four or five more pages of this section. And I would find myself there for hours and hours. And it's something I've applied to like content I've created since right. then or any other sort of writing. So I thought that was really cool. I'm never writing another long book again. When I read The Seven Spiritual Laws of Deepak Chopra, it's such a quick, easy, digestible read. And it makes you feel like you're really getting through the book when you only got to read 10 pages and then you're on to the next chapter. Yeah. Totally agree. Give us one more. I gotta go pick my daughter up from cheerleading. Um, oh, they're doing cheerleading still. Mm-hmm. Um, Black Tar Heel 24 wants to know what is the best advice that you didn't follow early in your careers? The best advice we didn't follow early in our clear careers. Okay, Charlotte. The best advice I didn't follow. I don't think I understand the question. The best advice I didn't follow? Some right. great advice you got, but you didn't follow it. And then as you got older, you're like, oh. Oh, that that was all super young for me. Because truth be told, when, when my dad told me when I was like 14, 15, 16, he used to point out all of the people that weren't doing nothing with their life around Mouse Corner. You know what I'm saying? And he would always make it a point to show me the newspaper, the person that just got arrested. And he would emphasize 50 years in prison. Like, that type of shit. He would emphasize that kind of stuff. And he would always tell me if I didn't change my lifestyle, I would end up in jail, broke, or dead sitting... I know he said I would end up in jail, dead, or broke sitting under the tree. He was like, that, that's, he was like, that's it for you if you do X, Y, and Z. So... When I started seeing this happen to people, I was like, okay, maybe he's on to something, but whatever, that ain't gonna happen to me. But when it did start happening to me at such an early age, from that point on, I made it a point to always listen to what elders were telling me. Mm. I, I would make it a point to always listen to what people who have you know, lived the life I have yet to live, that have more aged than me, that have done things I've never done before, I never dismiss their advice. I just take it. In. And then when the situation arises for me, whatever it may be, I always have something to pull from. Oh, I remember when such and such said this. I remember when, oh, when such and such said that. I don't dismiss any of it. And I'm mm. glad I learned that at such an, at such an early age. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I, the, the advice I would, maybe as far as comedy goes, like I would always ask like older comics for advice and they'd go, ah, just get on stage. And I thought they were dismissing me. 
And, uh, you know, cause I'd go home and I'd rewrite my set every single night. I was kind of like a maniac when it came to like, how can I get better at study everything? I'd like transcribe everything, read every book you could possibly read on it. And, um, that's why you a beast at that shit now. Though. I appreciate that. But I realized that what they were saying was basically, you're not even comfortable on stage yet. Like once you get that part down. All of the other things are going to make way more sense. They was basically telling you to put your 10,000 hours in. Exactly. Yeah. So they're like, just get that up, get ready. And I tell that to comics now. And I guess the one bit of advice I would give them is like, like do this for a year and then we'll talk, but, or two years, whatever it is. But uh, to pay attention to like how you're funny around your friends, the people you're most comfortable with, because that's usually who you're not putting on a show for. It's mm -hmm. like generally who you are. But I think that was it. It was like, sometimes people give you advice in your career and it seems dismissive. Don't dismiss it. Don't dismiss it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. True indeed. Um, we did it. Uh, thank you, guys. Another great episode from Show Studios here in Brooklyn. Hey. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent. Oh, salute to Deezus and Meryl, too, man. Congratulations on season three. Hey. They got a season three pickup. Salute to Deezus and Meryl. Let's My go. guys, I love when I see people. I love when I've seen the grind yep. up close and personal. Yeah. And they got another season. And they got a book out, too. Um, It's called... um. What is the name? Let me, pull, let me pull it up real quick. I should have said that early in the podcast, but I, it just hit my mind just now when I shouted out the studio because they shout out their studio on every episode when they when when they do their show. Uh, Jesus and Mero, they have a book called God Level Knowledge Darts, Life Lessons from the Bronx, which I cannot wait to get my motherfucking hands on. So salute to Deezus Samaro, man. Season three, they just got picked up and they got their new book out. So salute to them. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.